at the time we joined Labour Party, Baisef could not even produce a councillor. It was P2B, Alex Oti, and many others who joined Labour Party that changed the narrative of Labour yeah, Party. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that that, that gave us that, an ideology. Did you join? That was why I joined. Right. Because I believed in those ideologies. Yeah, but you keep talking that, about the Labour Party. No, I mean, Labour Party then, but I'm talking about Labour Party right. today. Right. So, so it's, it's undergone a transformation. It's, gonna, it's undergone a transformation right. that I believe in the next election cycle will be by itself more formidable than any other political party. And you don't believe... But if we join other political parties, right. we can now come together... You don't believe it's a cosmetic transformation. No, it's not cosmetic Because, I mean, that's why we're seeing it, you know, falling apart <laughs> at the seams. But let me ask you this. Um, the point has been made that mega parties or new parties, or for that matter, the Labour Party, no matter how ideologically sound are not the answer, that the solution is root and branch reform of the Electoral Commission, INEC. Because, if it, because it doesn't matter how good and moral and ideological the new political party is or the existing parties are, if the capture of INEC continues to prevail, then there'll never be free and fair elections in Nigeria, and good leaders will always be denied the opportunity to lead. Do, do you agree with that? I assessment? agree with that, and I'm glad that you raised that up. A few of us... Uh, I mean, you're in the National Assembly. Yes, That's where you can start the reform assembly. process. Yeah, yeah. A, few, a few of us in the National Assembly, most especially in the House of Representatives, have, over some time now, been looking at reform of the Electoral Act and also to bring some parts of the Electoral Act to be in conformity with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. There are a lot of people who are every day waking up, uh, going to work in INEC and believe in doing the right things. But there are also a lot of people who wake up, go to work in INEC, both at the state, local levels and the national levels, they are attracted to various forms of inducement that compromises uh, their positions, that compromises INEC from doing the right thing. Now, we are reviewing the Electoral Act with a view to amend certain sections of the Electoral Act that will instill confidence in INEC conducting elections and also not just INEC conducting elections, the court system is also part of that election mm. process. How do we create a transparent system that all Nigerians will be happy, regardless of a political uh, persuasion, that Nigeria can conduct? I think I had a, the other day the president uh, talked about the electoral system as well. So everybody's now talking about it. Now, we are looking at ways that, that in the Electoral Act, one, to deal with the uh, qualification issue, to ensure that that qualification issue is a pre-election matter, no longer both pre-election and post-election matter. We're also looking at possibility of amending the Act to ensure that when we say electronic transmission, it means electronic transmission. It doesn't mean manual transmission, as we have now, INEC has the, the, the latitude to be able to say, well, we want to do manual and electronic. Now it's going to be explicit. So there's no, there's no in between. And all this will be done before 2027. Before 2027. Right. And also the possibility now of saying, INEC, immediately you conduct an election. Within 10 to 15 days or 14 days, 14 working days after you've conducted the election, that you must transmit certified true copies of that uh, election to the court, because courts are now involved. So that anybody who now needs documentation will now go to the court, no longer INEC. That's a good point. So, so, hmm. so we're looking at all these ways to be able to ensure these systemic changes uh, Bearing, yes, yeah, there are going to be some Nigerian factors in it as well, but we need to clean up the system. 
-hmm. And that's why I'm happy that you raised this issue because a whole lot of us are having sleepless nights in ensuring that we we'll, we we'll clean up the system, make the system more transparent and, are th and, and, are, and more more uh, and, and more efficient. And are those people in the minority or the majority in the in in the National Assembly? One good thing about the National Assembly, let me say from the House of Representatives, mm. under the leadership of Tajidin Abbas, he's not here. Or uh, Benjamin Carlo, he's not here. But one thing that I like about their leadership is the camaraderie that they have brought forth to members to say, yeah, we may be APC, we may be Labour, we may be PDP or any other political party otherwise minded, but on critical national issues, there's no party. So we have all uh, legislators of different persuasions and perspectives that are coming together to ensure that we'll bring about sanity in, in, in the electoral process and to make it more transparent than what it has always been. Well, on that rather hopeful note, I think. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all, my people. Uh, it's good to be back again. It's another day, Saturday, 18th May, 2024. You see that last bit on here? This is what we all have been waiting for. If they can actually bring this to light, is what we all are be talking about on this platform. You and I have talked about this. We've asked this question so many times rep repeatedly. You know, how can we have electoral reform before 2027? If they're already deliberating on it or rather contemplating or uh, doing anything, whatever against it now, is a good news. I don't know how some of you would react to this. Like I said, if they can bring this to light, is a good news before 2027. Yes, because um, if you check what happened in the general election, 2023 presidential election, um, INEC and the judiciary actually destroyed Nigeria. You know, they were the one, that, you know, when some people call Tinubu, Tinubu, Tinubu. Although I was part of the people that called Tinubu, but I now get to realize that Tinubu only allegedly paid money out to these people these people have the choice to say yes or no, but they decided to say yes and allegedly collected the money. That's what I'm saying. So um, if they can reform the electoral system before 2027, I think you and I will smile. Thank you very much, people. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you very much for your time with us. Uh, mother of all mommy diaspora, good evening to you, mommy. Thank you very much for all you do. Appreciate you. Happy Sunday, happy Saturday to you. Uh, thank you very much, Abu Azi. Thank you very much, sir, for all you do. Appreciate you always. Thank you, patience. Idemo dear. Thank you, Peter Ifi. Thank you very much, and thanks for the super chat already. And God, I will bless you. I'm very, very grateful for this. Thank you very much, Mother Tusa B, uh, and many others that have already showcased on the screen. I would like to acknowledge Adela Jaogombi. Thank you very much, sir, for your super chat earlier on as well. May God bless you. Thank you very much, my poor can never run dry. None of you that is uh, supporting me. None of you will ever labor in vain. I'm grateful. Thank you very much, everyone right there. But shy enough here, my dear sister. Thank you very much for your time and all you do. Thank you, thank you, Fabio Abound. Thank you, great mind. On ye who if any and many, many orders right there. But I'd just like us to move on quickly so that I can take, um, I only have just two articles. One of the articles are the one you are seeing right there on the screen right now. Uh, article is saying, I will support Peter will be in 2027 if the if is what I'm going to reveal to you guys right now so that you guys can know what the if is all about. And um, yeah. Uh, Monia Ferreira, thank you very much, sir, for your time with us today. I appreciate every one of you, my people. If you are listening to my voice, I want you to know that I appreciate you. I might not be able to measure everybody's names all the time, but I want you guys to know whatever that we are doing here is a collective effort. So I uh, appreciate you all. Let me take this article quickly. But while I'm taking this article, let me post out a link to this Saturday with my light link. Pete, we might likely be finishing this broadcast on time, depending on the engagement. So the engagement matters so much to me, like I normally say all the time, a link I've posted. Currently, we have about 409 people watching us, although the visibility is quite good across, but we might be finishing on time today. 
depend on the engagement, like I said before. All right, I'll put this on screen. But the good thing about it is that my voice is getting back and I'm getting stronger. I give thanks to God for that. Thank you very much, all of you that show cared. Uh, some of you wrote nice messages to me privately and all that. Thanks for your support. May God bless you all, my people. Thank you, thank you. My this is Apachai Nofe. Thank you very much for your support and your care. Uh, privately, I'm grateful. And many others. May God bless you all. Okay, let's take this one quickly. As you can see right there, I will support Peter Obi in 2027 if Atiko. Okay, let's take this, the full story. Former Vice President Atiko Abubakar has disclosed that he will support the 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, if the People's Democratic Party decide that it is the turn of the Southeast in the 2027. Hmm. Voila. Now see the condition for that. That condition, in case you guys are not getting that, I will support the towel. Be if, if, if the the P, if PDP decide that it is the turn of the southeast in twenty twenty seven. I don't know. I don't want to give my own interpretation or understanding of this. I might be right, I might be wrong, but I, will, I always feel more comfortable these days allowing my panelists to, to grind it how they wish. And so I'm more if, if, that if not big one. Meanwhile, Article the presidential flag bearer of the PDP in the 2023 general election said he will throw his weight behind the way if he is picked by his party. That means Peter Obi is already planning going to PDP. Anyway, as I say for you, I said I did a read that more and I not turn out to my own letter. Uh -huh. Because how can PDP be contemplating giving a ticket to somebody that is not in PDP? In case you don't understand that paragraph, let me take it again. Article the presidential flag bearer of the PDP in the 2023 general election said he would throw his weight behind Obi if he is picked by his party. <laughs> All right. Uh, should we continue reading this or should we just leave it? I guess you guys already understand it, right? Should we continue reading or just leave it? <laughs> Allah. Oh, wow, my fair appreciate Mama Kafu JB. Guys, we're gonna press on the dollar sign now. What did they happen? Now, see Saturday. Saturday, my mates they enjoy their evening. I day here with you now. See what Mama Kafu JB is doing and all that. Just do the same thing. Click on it. You know, if 10 people, okay, let, let's do this. Mama for JB, thank you very much, man, for all you do, for your continued support. I'm very, very grateful. Before we continue on this, I need 10 people, just 10 people. If you don't know, one dollar you want to give, I'm not interested, I will be grateful. Just give 10 people should respond to your comment on the dollar sign, just 10. Let's do this, thank you.
all right um uh, my joy is always when i call and people respond i'm very very grateful it's always my joy thank you very much i'm gonna go bless you number people i'd like to quickly start uh, my appreciation from uh peg Modi. thank you very much man thanks for all you do uh may pocket never run dry thank you for this uh uh support thank you very much uh spiritual happiness thanks very much for all you do i'm very very grateful may pocket never run dry then i have uh charles wilson thank you very much for the support as well thanks for answering my call the god bless you may pocket never run dry i'm grateful then when i have party solomon party solomon thank you very much i'm very very grateful for this um your pocket never run dry yes uh this is one of the joy that every human being pray for to have in life when you call and people answer you is very very important and for you to have that kind of uh stand in life you must be able you must be able to live a good life you know be truthful uh have a name that people can reckon to yeah that's why you see some people in life yeah they already have money but you see they'll be doing something you'll be surprised ah, ah this person don't already get money how come that because he wants to celebrate his birthday or maybe wedding or whatever the way people will be donating for him then you that is poor will be looking from distance yeah ah, this money that they're supposed to give to the poor they are giving it to this just person because he's already rich no no it's not like that because that particular person have built his name you know diligently truthfully in the past he have built his integrity in the past that's why you see things like that happened you know i just want to say i'm grateful God bless you all. I can see some of you responded to that question I asked earlier on, you know, um, <laughs> about Peter Obi, you know, whether he's going to PDP or not. For me, I don't know. I just make not talk, me not talk anything. And for them to be wishing to give him tickets and all that, I don't know. So, but still, I'll leave it the way it is. Uh, thank you very much, Peggy Modi, for rejoining the membership. A program god bless you man i'm really really grateful you've been doing that and uh, you've done it again god bless you man okay let me bring the people the backstage in i already have two people mother patricia thank you very much i can see you on the backstage thank you uh okay jonathan for the first time you're not only your device <laughs> you're on the backstage what's happening because your device is not on but you're on the backstage maybe you're having a network issue you know uh Maka Fujibi says, i don't think mr peter will be, will be going back to pdp me too i don't think so except uh they want to surprise us you know there's a lot of rumors going on right now um uh, peter will be is going here he's not going yet peter will be is going here he's not going yet we don't really have any concrete information so that's why we are very, very careful, most especially myself as the anchor of this program. I'm very, very careful how I talk about this whole thing. You know, uh, anything is based on assumption, you must be careful, you know, how you present it. So I don't have any concrete information how this will work. But meanwhile, I'd like us to move on. Thank you very much, my people. Now God bless you. Let me quickly, Mr. Jonathan, you're on the backstage for the third time. I think you should sort okay let me remove it so that you can sort yourself out because i don't know if you are listening to me all right uh, my people i appreciate every one of you uh that article right there uh, i would like to bring another one in quickly the last one i guess yeah the last one then i'll now have another shocking one minute less than one minute video for you guys but meanwhile let's take this one policemen abduct pos agent in river state brutalize him before extorting one million naira from him. As I report, I report this one. Hmm. What a country. A country. A country. My God. Anyway, this was announced by a human rights activist, Harrison uh, Guamisha, in a video he posted on X on Thursday. Uzoma goes well. A point of sale agent has been kidnapped by some individuals armed with AK 47 rifles. 
who were later identified as police officers on Ellen Road in River State. This was announced by a human rights activist, Harrison, in a video posted on his ex page on Thursday. He tweeted, they arrested him around Port Harcourt Oweri Road and took him to a Port Harcourt Wari Road where they took his ATM card, PIN, and withdrew the sum of 1 million naira and 20,000 naira POS charge. Ah, <sighs> wow. Anyway, we'll leave that the way it is. But meanwhile, the last one I have for you guys so that we can start talking. We have Ogas CM with us today. Ogas CM is in the building early today. That means this broadcast, eh? It will be as good gets. I know, say, Ogas CM is our teacher for a year. Now, our lecturer. When they talk, all of us, they come, they listen. You must hold your pen and paper when Ogas CM they talk. But meanwhile, let's listen to this short video, my people, quickly. You know, they kidnapped 500 people who they talk that day. Some people, they ask for comment section. How they take kidnap 500 people? Where they put them? Which car carry them? How they take... Make I show you now. See the 500 people who they kidnap. See how they take carry them. See how they take, take them. Come on. Watch them by yourself now. You see, huh? You see, Abe, huh? Abe, who is in charge of Nigeria? <laughs> hey, oh God. These people here, they see so, eh? Now, kidnap, they kidnap all of them. They use their own leg. I don't these are even more than, these are more than 500 people, sir. They kidnap all of them. <laughs> be, just, be, like be like, that. Like, just like that. This Leo yes. Just like that. Be like, say, the people where they do crusade. I think, this okay. are <laughs> Now, kidnap. <laughs> They all surround all of them with gun. They but kidnap that, them. They use their left waka, enter inside the coven. Even Piki, where they carry for back, all of them. <laughs> what, Nigeria, <laughs> what Nigeria cannot do does not exist. Even now only Nigeria even, will see this like this. Even, even Piki, where the, and if you check where some go there pregnant, even Piki, where they, where they carry for back. Yeah. Now you all see so. They kidnap Piki, where they inside womb. Yes. No. This one go down the reach a million. This one go down the reach a million. No, this one not be five hundred. Nah, uh, I mean, they as, uh, uh, no, they say more than five hundred. They could okay. not specify the, the number or whatever. Up, the person will post them before I'm going to ask me question later. Make I carry the person come. You know, uh, you know, if to say, if to say, if to say we re, we go repeat them, we go time them. Eh, I see the worker they pass. Maybe Jonathan go they check. People where they are going to change, they will go what? multiply and by we go multiply and by the minutes where like, where the video <laughs> to take to, to take eh, estimate now because okay see for every this thing go cost then you go see people where they back back where you know see this thing go full Barcelona Stadium now where be... <laughs> <laughs> now so we see I'm with my people this is the country we find ourselves this one, this one uh, I before do. before I okay. wait quickly me later. Okay. Okay. Make a show now where 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 okay. they post them everywhere, but my car only one come. It's okay. everywhere on social media right, right now. You know, if you know if they want kidnap one person, then go there like four boys. Eh? So the num the kidnappers they 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 outnumber the victim where they want kidnap. But this one Sam, the victim the victim outnumber it's not breaking, not one, not two, not 50, but 500. 500 people have been kidnapped in Zuma local government, San, San Francisco State. In and fact, not a single word from the governor or the presidency. Families around the region can be seen migrating to unknown destinations in an attempt to run away from the attackers. No, no this one, people, people go saying a lie. No be kidnapping. You know, eh, normally kidnappers they outnumber their victim to overpower them, isn't it? Now, so are they see. <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this one victim outnumber kidnappers. This <laughs> one, eh? I say with the apple for Nigeria right now, eh? Hi, God. 
Wow. <laughs> nah, this thing, they have no bad They have no bad They are fighting. And they were here. careful. Not here. We know them man. We know them man. I thought they have no bad They are captive. You know? Uh-huh. Yet, that uh-huh. was they were captive. They go. They are not to face them. You know? How they want to face them? them? People are not carry guns. I said beg. I beg. Okay, now so they will all of the 500 people. They will face them and they will be. I don't know. I beg. Nigeria, my daughter, I mean. But if you notice, be like saying only no, so so women are in full there. That's why they, 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 they you know when no ogre see him, you know they get them. Um, these kidnappers now they are targeting women. You get the way they use that they do first. Uh, only say one of those speaking where they carry for back fee one for fee be male, sha, but <laughs> Oga see him kidnapper go visit person home. He go take the wife come home, he go leave us back for house. Why? Tell me why. Be- because now the man, now the man go go find the money now. And now the man go go find the money. <laughs> eh? You know, you know, eh? Listen, then go enjoy the wife first until the man come. You go take her because there is this proverb in Nibo language. They say the vulture. You know the vulture. The vulture say in wife they pregnant. If in wife bomb picking, now in lock. If in wife die with the pregnancy, now in lock still. So so in that way. In that way, the vulture go chop. So you know this thing, eh? Though we are laughing, but uh, it's a serious something anyway. To be honest with you, it's quite unbecoming. I mean, how can nobody can believe these people? People like this are kidnapped. There are more than there are thousands anyway. It cannot be five hundred. No, it can't. It cannot anyway. be. Anyway, then they uh, kid. Where they are kidnappers? Then now we don't even see the kidnappers. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, and, see uh, you can buy yes. ticket from UK, may it goes on Farah, may it go find out. Yeah. No, no, Zumi, no be Niger State to talk. But did no why the thought be saying they don't seem like people were the under um, what is it called? Under under car captive or something. Because where they are going, it's like a massive vast area of land. The people just they run like say tiger um, or lion, they pursue. No be even lion. Or like you know, they are running away from a fire outbreak. This thing doesn't it doesn't show seriousness. So say they kidnap them. Okay, okay. Now if they kidnap this one, this number now, they feel give them food for one day. If they if they if, if they there for detention, that's or why. Oh, that's yeah. Huh? That's why they go say they want. That's why they go say they want fifty billion now. Huh? Okay, to feed them first, so maybe to settle them, but to they will send them, them bill. Camp. How much it don't cost them to feed these people during the during the time where they say they they under their custody. They will calculate everything, calculate their profit on top, and send them to federal government, saying that 50 billion I they want for the ransom. Exactly. You see, you see, you see when I say <laughs> this thing that this thing <laughs> now laugh, no laugh go kill me here. Because you know this thing, eh? Sometimes, okay. How I'm trying to help them manage the crowd. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> no, let me put my let me let me let me put my, eh, no be you should you know that's why I say here now we analyze news we they look at Nami are the best analysis na best I never see them before na based on this the way you show Nami that's why they say supposing we know how long it lasts I go tell Jonathan may the count may the count we go multiply them by the number of minutes no what one one minute give you multiply them by how long the this thing just to get estimate now what I'm saying is that. You know, kid is kidnapping something. Man. Why? Why my mind they go be say? I say, okay, if you pack them like this now, then go there somewhere thousands. What next? You go begin negotiate with federal government, or maybe then go threaten them, then go buy them. How can this type of thing be taking place in a state? They say in a Niger state, which is next to the federal capital. Yes, Niger state is near to federal and then Kaduna. What really is happening? This is a high class franchise people are using. This high class franchise, if you just go other one, two villages, tell them to clear, then just begin their run out. These are women, they are helpless, malnourished from what I'm seeing, malnourished. So what I what really what is what really is this? Where is the chief of army staff? You see, sometimes when I even say, like, if I criticize Nigerian army or say something that where they are deployed, people might misunderstand me. In a country like Nigeria, where this type of thing is happening, are you supposed to see soldiers checking vehicle particulars anywhere in the country? 
I don't want to say whether in the southeast. Are you supposed to see military people on the street anywhere when Nigeria is under captive? Where is military helicopter? Where is their jet, Air Force jet? Where is the naval, I mean, no, Navy and Sea? Where is the DSS, all those people? Where are they? When they are showing this type of thing. See, these are, we raise questions here, which are pertinent. Where are they? Does it mean Nigeria is helpless that even our military, the so-called soldier everywhere, you see them harassing people, extorting money from people, guarding national <clears throat> house of reps and house of senate, you see soldiers there everywhere. So what? Are, why, why should this thing be happening? It is either that if this is not true, maybe they want to do one type of... Uh, um, 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 Boju, boju, the more you look, the less you see. Or if it is true, I mean, it, uh, Nigeria has packed up now. Don't we have a commander in chief? I remember when something like this happened in January, when we were talking about the plateau, something. I said, Where is the CNC? Because that name, commander in chief, means you can be from your desk, you give a command. CM, me, I believe we no get government. We, we no yeah. get. We just, that, we just get true. some people just filling space. Yeah. Exactly. We don't get anything it, government. We don't get strong. Because, Make we just live on like that. Because, for Everything else say, na magic. For people to say na, uh, uh, the number one, you are number one, you are number one rule. You can build bridge, oh, you can build road, oh, you can build a good hospital. That one, Najara. The thing where people go judge you are seeing, seeing uh, security of life and property. Man, they've challenged you. From your desk, you can summon, you can give order. Just TV go, NTA is nothing, not the, just beam it. The next minute they say the president has given up immediately. So far, that seal of the president of the whatever, whatever is there. You give order. That's the meaning of CNC. That root those people out, no matter what it is. You have the aircraft. You have this, you can take surveillance. So that's why when people talk of what is the duty of the CNC, is it just to go and settle quarrel between Wika and Fubara to sign agreement? That one, I buy, that is bright. That is not your duty. Call them, let them come, they sit down with you, you sign, oh yeah, prepare, we can sign here, Fubara sign here. That is not the duty of the CNC. It's not. This is your duty. Social dislocation like this, moving people were forced to move from A to B, not because they wanted to be, because something is chasing them. Who are those people chasing? Because it's an affront. They are, they are challenging you. When something like this happens, what they are doing is, they are trying to say, I dare the CNC. They are daring you. That's what it means to me. That is interpretation. It is true that some of us, we, we, we won't like it. We, we may laugh over it or may, maybe cry. But they are telling you, who is the CNC? I dare you. We've taken over your territory. I dare you. The whole country belongs to you. They are challenging you. What do you do? So that is the issue. That is the way I look at it. Because as much as we could laugh over it or pepper over it, it's a shame. That is, the, that is an affront on the constitution you swear to... <clears throat> protect, preserve, and defend. These three words, they all must mention it, to defend, protect, and preserve the Constitution. <clears throat> so where is it? How can this type of thing be happening? Now, people going like this, have they eaten? They have not. Obviously, all of them are hungry. Looking at the picture, they are malnourished, they are hungry. Trekking in a dusty environment and say something in there, they kidnap them. Go and pack them somewhere and start to negotiate. What sort of nonsense is that? You can as well I invite the bandit or whoever to come and take over so rock and be listen, 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 CM. Words like security, international security doesn't mean anything to them. Words like uh, all they all they are doing is this sabotage, economic sabotage, uh, treasonable felony, all these people that call themselves in government. They don't understand the purpose of their existence, they're just there. For just to hold tight to walk around with bodyguard and think they are take pictures. They just they don't know what the relation of duty is, what you know, uh, incompetency. It's a serious problem, my brother. I don't even know where to start. It's too big. It's too big. We have issues, man. When we get to other topics, I will add more, man. It's too big. All right. Okay. Uh thank you very much, Alga uh, for joining us. I appreciate you all. Okay, I just wanted you guys to quickly vent that out.
before we start talking. Although it's going to be an interactive yes, session. Niger, yes, Niger, watch, please, just one second. Ferreira, yes. since you are here, since you are here today, I know. Let me just pick your brain. If Fela is alive, because I know you are a fella a fella you like you quote Fela all the time. If Fela is alive, what we what type of music Fela go compose now with this type of thing happening? <laughs> right, right now, Fela go say, I sit down, they look, I just they sleep now. I don't look again. I just say my bed, they sleep. <laughs> say, I don't tell you now. <laughs> say now I just they sleep. We say I they snore. You know, go even say this. He's the English. No, when I don't finish with my madness, making a come wake him up. Uh, okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's true, to be honest. It's a shame. All right, it's a shame. Yeah, thank, it's you. A thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let me let's quickly do it. Uh, how it's supposed to be, my people. I will leave you guys to uh, have an interactive session with you yourself. Okay, um, for callers, some of you were calling already, you know, in case you want to call in now, this is your time to do so. If not, I'm going to call on Madam Patricia to speak to her because she's the first on the panel. So I'm waiting in the next 10 seconds. If I receive a call, that will be a proper engagement. If not, then I'm going to move on back to the panel. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. Uh, oh, Kinsley O'Gara, he, thank you very much for the super chat. God bless you. May pocket never run dry. I really do appreciate this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate every one of you. Okay, let me take uh, the first call for today, uh, which is Ogashi Mizi. Ogashi Mizi. Yes, I can watch. We are here today. Thank you, sir. Good Happy evening. Happy weekend, everybody. Thank you, sir. Talk to us. I greet everyone. Yeah, um, for me, the issue of this uh, P2P, you know, I don't know. This is not supposed to be eating us. It's not something on our body. For me, if anything, any way to take this power from this blood tumors, anyhow they will do it, let them do it. I don't care. I don't care wherever the person coming from, whether from the moon or from uh, heaven or from the world, anyhow they want to do it. So far, they will take this power from from them on 2027. Let them do it. That's my stand. Anybody that says, oh, we don't do this, that means you don't know politics. Nigeria is suffering. Things are hard. Things are becoming worse, worse and worse and worse every day in Nigeria. The people are helpless. The masses are helpless. Women and men and women are helpless. They're just looking every morning because they can't do anything. They won't do anything. If they remember what happened on um on two gates, they will just oh no, it won't happen. Whenever, even if you carry Nigeria for like a single national anthem. That's where the army get power. We, we are saying where is the army now? Where we are they kidnap five hundred? Look at look at the way look at the way they are marching them. You know, like uh, people are going they are going to farm. You see you see all those things. So that's kind of play. This kind of play. If we carry your flag, national anthem, and here we will, they, 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 they operate, um the first people they will shoot you down. They call you down because they don't have brain. So. Any way, Peter will be and co. Let me put that. Let me put it that way. Peter will be and co. Make that is take this thing, this this Monday and uh, this uh, 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 this power from these people. I would like it. I don't care anyhow they're gonna do it. I will support them. And everybody gonna support them. Don't say no, 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 no. He keep, keep from now till next year. He keep saying no, no, no. That day, twenty twenty seven will come and go, and we they will stay in power, and we will stick by special days of all of us will be alive, and we will still come out here and say oh blah 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 blah. We better see, we better face the reality, my people. We better face the reality so that. We will we will forge ahead as Nigeria. Okay. 
like what I see in that the Sanfara, the, the kidnapping stuff. If you say, okay, let me go this way now, like, uh, okay, um, if you say, okay, define Nigeria, define Nigeria, let everybody go. Okay, thank you. Then the full army or our people go their own way. Then, if they want to kidnap, they have to start, continue kidnapping their people, go sit on their own cup of tea. Because you know, it's that's the only place they get the power. I don't know. They, uh, they use all this thing to do politics. They, they have made Nigeria the more you look. Eh? And you see more. I won't say you you, you, lay, the less you see. You see more. The more you look, the more you see. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Believe me, I don't know. I don't know. Will God, will God help Nigeria? They go help Nigeria and the people over, over there. So, um, uh, Edo, Edo election is coming up uh, in November. Please, I see stand where I stand. I see stand with as well. Hey, my Edo people, economy go. We should vote. We should vote for him and so that he will change those states. We can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Hello? Oh, gosh, you mean, so we can. Okay, okay. Not yet, happen. we were hearing you, sir. Okay, let us move on to the next person quickly. Uh, who is the next person that wants to speak to us? Please be. Uh, okay, Ginger Breadman, are you there, sir? Jija Breadman, we can't hear you. I need to pick another call if we can't hear you. Hello? Okay. Jija Breadman, you are connecting. I don't know where you're connected to. Okay. Hello? Mr. Man, are you there? What's happening? Why is everybody connected? Is it me? Absolutely nonsense. Is are it me? Here? Did you call me? No, no, no. I've not called you, sir. Oh, okay. I thought you said Mr. Man. No, I'm saying Mr. Man. Let me see you, Jija Breadman, can be. Nobody's hearing me. What's happening? I'm hearing you. I'm hearing no, no, no. you. I mean, on the phone. No. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. None of them sorry. can hear me on the phone. I don't know what's happening. I think something is wrong somewhere. It's strange. Let me try Mr. Emmanuel for the third time. Oh, something is wrong. Something is totally wrong. I need to turn on this phone. I don't know what's happening because. Everybody call it. Mr. Man, are you there? Okay, hold on. I can hear you now. I was about turning off the phone. Hold on, please. Let me pull on the speaker. Just hold on, please. All right, Mr. Manuel, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Right. I was happy. If I say if this be really work, we don't want to do this. What are next? Judiciary, we cannot do this. If it's a legal issue, we didn't work between the people and the party. We didn't tell you, we didn't If you like it, they cannot do this because they don't have the election. So my prayer that this is work. Official will not allow with anybody. So they can keep up with the ATC. And secondly, for the Agency of Commission Federation, it's like this. It's very clear. To be that as well, is the best candidate. Is the best candidate. A is also a good candidate, but what it what it can't against him is that ethnicity. And you can't you can't take that away from a two six one because by by, by right, this, the next government should come from a two central. So that that one will knock us. That one will knock uh, a part out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, let's see if we can talk to someone else again. <laughs> yes, I uh, uh, call up with bread, man. I don't talk, 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 talk. Not true. 
Not true. Yeah. I greet you. Thank I you, sir. You. I greet all the panelists. You are doing well. Uh, Mr. Elvis, you know, a few days ago, I uh, I called in and I made a submission that uh, with the way a job is not mature now for Nigeria, we should not be overemphasizing on the means or the form of alliance that we need to take back Nigeria. Mm. The most important thing is that we want to take back that country from this satanic APC administration. And I submitted that if Obi would want to go back or uh, join that or whoever may be, mm -hmm. I am in for it. Obi is a tested man, he is trusted. We know his person, he is focused, he cannot be sweet. He's just like you, Nam Davis. You have always told us here that your father is a, a, a PDP chief day. But we have never judged you by association of your father. We know that you are a man of dignity because you have been tested and trusted and you can give you a mandate and we know that you will work with it very, very well. And that is who will be this. So I like this development. And I think, Mr. Elvis, you kind of misread that the article. That article say that he's ready to support Obi if he's being given the ticket. He didn't say if Obi is being given PDP ticket. Whatever party Obi is, as long as that political party is Obi. No, 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 no. That, no, 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 sir. He said that. He said if the People Democratic Party give him tickets. Is that what you, that what you read? I don't think that's what you read. Okay, let, maybe you might be right, but just hold on, hold on. Because I'd like to reconfirm. Yeah, Okay, let me quickly go through it again because I need to be sure you might be right. Let's get this, let's get this right together, you know, because um you know, say for this platform all of us they learn if I start to they argue now. The I can't say I was arguing blindly. Okay, let's take this. I have the article here. Um, former vice president Atiku Abubaka has disclosed that he will support the 2023 presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, if people democratic party decide that it is the turn of the southeast in 27. then they went on okay. article the presidential uh, uh, flag bearer of the pdp in the 2023 general election said he will throw his weight behind ob if he's picked by his party Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. There's another paragraph on, on quote speech. Article said, unquote, as long as it is the decision of the party, I will abide by it. But I contested the 2023 presidential ticket because it was thrown open to all members of the party. He's talking about PDP, not Labour Party. Then he went on, unquote. If the party decide that it is the turn of the Southeast and Peter Obi is choosing, I won't hesitate, hesitate to support him. He's talking about PDP, sir. Uh -uh. It's too obvious. That statement, that statement is uh -uh. Exactly. He's talking about PDP now. Exactly, there is something cooking in the kitchen. It goes so yeah. dawn. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, let me now, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because I was surprised. You know, sir, I don't want you to argue. I just wanted to be sure that the, this article, I got it right. They're talking about PDP. If, if PDP give Peter Obi ticket, how can PDP be already, they are already contemplated to give Peter Obi ticket when Peter Obi is still a Labour Party a, a candidate is yeah. something they, hold on sir. hold on hold on I, I have someone on the phone uh mr innocent thank you very much sir, for calling in please talk to us yes yes mr. yeah mr 
the service. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm, I'm really, yes, I'm really in support of what you're saying. What he meant is, you know, if PDP, you know, select Peter Obi, Yes. But what I'm saying is that Peter Obi will never go back to PDP. This is my take. He will never go back to PDP for them to, uh, to select him. But if, on the other hand, he feels that if the PDP says is the turn of the South is possibly if it will be is you know running in in a, a Labour Party, maybe he will support it will be. Maybe that's what I'm saying. That's the way that I'm looking at it. The second, the other part of it. But okay. This meant meaning that it will be will be elected. I mean selected by PDP, which to me is not going to happen. Okay. Understand? Mr. Innocent, so, now you talk Amo, it will never happen. I will call you out. Yes, yeah, out. I will call you out. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, sir. I'm telling you, yeah, okay. I'm telling you now that it will never happen. Mr. Innocent, no, you, the, yeah. your statement is on Saturday, 18th May, 2024, yeah, yeah. at 8.13 p.m. Yeah, put that down. Yes. It okay. will never happen. You will not call me back. Okay. Now, the other Maybe you can further that for me. Now look at all these people, you know, for in a dose, a dose state. Look at the uh, different people are supporting different persons. Say for instance, if Alex Oti can, is allowed to rule to be governor for a dose state. Would any of these people say that they want this person, they want that person? Would they continue to say they want that person, they want that person instead of Alex Oti? Okay. Mr. Innocent. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? No. Okay. I'm saying, you know, all these people clamoring, they want this person, this person says, oh, this, you know, this is my, my candidate. This is my candidate. Now they are fighting over themselves. You know, who is supposed to? Now, I'm saying that the, all these three other candidates, if, for instance, constitution allows it that, you know, somebody like Alex Oti can also govern a do state. Will they choose any of those their press their you know contenders over being uh, over Alex Oti? This is what I'm saying. It's a yes. question. Okay, I don't know. Me, yes. I don't know. Let, let people. What, I'm what they are looking, they, they should be looking for who is who is going to replicate Alex Oti. That's what they should be looking for. So this question. So who is your candidate in the Do State Governorship election? Okay. That's why I'm saying to them, those of them saying this person is my candidate, that person is my candidate. I don't have a candidate there. Okay. Know? All right. I, I, only wish, I only wish a do state to be like a, a you know, a, a, a Abia state because that's what I wish for a Imo state, but it never happened. You know? Thank okay. You much, Mama. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Innocent. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Call us, please. Please don't do. Let me move on to my panel panelists so that they can talk uh, within themselves after Mother Patricia. Mother Patricia, thank you very much for your patience with us. I'd like you to talk to us now. Good evening to you. Good evening, Mr. Evans. Thank you, and, uh, Happy weekend to everybody again. I'm glad to be here. Great to see you all. And good evening, Mommy Diaspora. And thanks to everyone that has already super chatted the channel thank you for your continuous support to the channel god bless you and of course the panelists our panelists admirable panelists all of you thank you for being here today i hope we will break the table you know i want to see this table breaking today <laughs> so maybe to niger to Niger should come. I'm waiting for the way, to Niger. We don't miss to Niger for like 78 years now. Never hear from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but not the less, let's press on the like and the like button that the thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Elvis, I'm even surprised that we are talking about 2027. You know, because the hunger in the land <laughs> is getting <laughs> i would say is becoming unbearable 
because there are a lot of people now that they can't even afford a square meal a day. Many are going home, you know, going to sleep with empty stomach. So we're talking about 2027, it just shows also the insensitivity of this so-called, um, you know, PDP and uh, even Labour Party and the West. Because for me, at this point, <laughs> Nigerians should, uh, you know, take the bull by the, uh, by the own. Because I don't see how many people are going to be left if this continues. Because the way it is now, and it doesn't look, it doesn't seem to be, it, it doesn't look like there's the turn, the, the, there's any, the, the, the tide will turn soon. It doesn't look like that. It's not looking, it's not looking good at all. You know, uh, food uh, uh, inflation has gone over 40%, food. So what are we talking about? You know, we are looking at 2027. From now to 2027, is that not 36 months? Is that not 36 months? So what are the people, go how are they going to be living before that time? Who is going to remain if this if this continues this trajectory that we are seeing now if it continues who will remain in that country how many people will remain there are many parents now that cannot even afford to pay their children's school fees there are a lot of dropouts children at home now because their parents cannot even feed them talk less of sending them to school so i don't know why they are busy talking about 2027 when they have a very pressing issue to address they should be addressing the the hunger in the land you know there's a way they should put pressure on the on the the, the present administration and then nigerians will back them up and push these things come out of there because they don't know what they are doing so for them to be telling us they are planning towards 2027, I think that's selfish as well. Because they're not looking at the people. If you really have the people in mind, you should be thinking of immediate solution. You'll be finding how to ameliorate the hunger in the land. That's what you should be planning for, not to come here and be telling me you want to measure, you don't want to measure. What's that? That's to, to tell me that none of you are different. You're all the same things. Because, come on, like I said, it will happen. It will happen. Obi will go back to PDP. He said that, and even if you go back to PDP, there's no, there's no guarantee that it's going to win. It's not going to win. He can try and go. He will not. The only chance he has is maybe to stand on his own. Because Labour Party also, he cannot stand, he cannot come back with Labour Party. Because Labour Party also have a lot of <laughs> shenanigans. That they have also displayed. So I don't see how he can become if he go back to to PDP. His chance might be if he stand on his own. That's the only way as I can see him if he can if he will ever be president in Nigeria. If you like me, they drop. Make a make if you like make a tickle align to to run as president because PDP decided okay south southeast. Uh, time to to become president. Nigerians will still turn him down because a lot of people will not want to vote for PDP. They will still turn it down, which means uh, we who is deceiving who? You had the opportunity to be vice under article. You refused. You went to PDP, and then you got you 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 put all Nigerians to to Labour Party that nobody knew where nobody knew Labour Party, and now you go back to PDP, and you expect Nigerians to follow you. I don't think so. I don't think so. But of course they will do what they know how to do. But the, the question will be: Will will there be enough votes for them to be able to, even if they bring electronic the electronic uh, uh, voting, you know, implement it? If people did not go out, if if they if they obedient don't go out to go and vote, it will still remain the way it is. And I'm very sure people will not go.
Because if you go to PDP, so what, what was all this shenanigans for? What was all this fight for? To start with, if you know you were the same, you abide with the PDP principles and ideology. You know, why did you move? You could have just submitted yourself to the leadership. You know, you would have just submitted yourself to, 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 the, to the party and say, okay, since it is so, though it is this time of Southeast, okay, you're not giving it, but okay, I will still remain. At least it's four years. Four years after that, you can come. You say, no, you went to uh, labor. And now you are, please, please. The fact that they are talking about 2027, it just means that they don't have Nigerians in mind. So anybody coming here to tell me that they are trying to take the take the uh, Nigeria from their hand, you know? If you take Nigeria from their hand in 2027, without the people to govern, who are you going to govern? If all of the buy before that time, who will you govern? Madam Patricia, Madam yes? Patricia please yes? let me just give you this question why you, so that you, you, you think over it. I think we left PDP for APC or one other party to go and try his luck. It didn't work. He came back. Saraki left. Kwakwanso left. So if Peter believes, is he bad? So that's what I'm telling you now. That's what I'm telling no, no, you. No, that. No, 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 because you said, why I'm did Peter you, believe? I'm asking, your questions. I'm asking your question. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you that. So it's about try your luck. It's about try your luck. That's what you are saying. But we don't want people, that's what we, I am against. If you have an ideology, if you really have a, an ideology, you know, you join a party because you have an idea. You, have a, you, you, you abide with the ideology of the party. It's the only way you don't have an ideology. You're not following any ideology, you know. That's why you run here, run there. So you even come in now to tell me that Atiko left, he went to go and try, came back. The other one left, he came and back. It means that we are condoning these failures. That's what we are saying, saying. Because what's the point? A party is supposed to have an ideology, which means PDP doesn't have any ideology as well. That, that's what, that's what it, that's, that is what it means. That there is no ideology. And of course, without a vision, without a vision, eh, the people perish. So without an ideology, the people will perish. And that's what we are saying. If not somebody with an ideology will not be jumping up and down because your ideology bet in you a conviction. A, a conviction. A conviction conviction will make you stick. Stick to a principle. Stick to that place that you are. You cannot be jumping up and down. You expect me to vote for you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested. I like people with principles and ideology and people that can abide with the ideology. You don't just jump here and there and you expect. So please, I'm not, I'm not for that. I'm, I totally disagree with that. You know, and this turn by turn, I don't even see any reason why it should still be happening. I don't see any reason. Must we, must we go with this turn by turn? Where the weakest will lead? Is it not fine that if, if, if we are really Nigerians, for example, if we are really Nigerians, why would it be that we are talking about uh, 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 the, the leadership should come from this, uh, they are rotating it? What is it? We need the best brain. It doesn't matter where you come from. We need the best brain to lead the country. It's not about Igbo tone. It's not about Yoruba tone. It's not about Unsa tone. It shouldn't be. Not in this, this age. We should be talking about, you know, someone that has the capability and capacity, you know, to bring the nation to where it ought to be. It doesn't matter where you come from. So we all this is Eastern, look, look at that language, I just turn my stomach. If it's Southeast time, if it's Southeast time, what, what is that? We should move away from that. And that is why we are so divided. Because you said we're always calling South East, not West, South, South, South. What about, I mean, come on. When are we going to come to, you know, realize that we are not going anywhere with this kind of ideology? Eh? It's, it's not, a, it's not, it's, it's certainly, it's a, a not, not, a, not a time. That's how we have been in this quagmire for many years. 
because you are doing rotation. I want to continue in that trajectory. No. I say no. I, I, like Alexis, Alex would say, say capital is resettlement to that. I say that too. Capital is I don't want that turn by turn. Let the best brain rule us. It doesn't matter where they come from. That's my principle. So for Atiko to be saying if it's a uh, Southeast Tiger, he will step down and throw his weight behind Obi. I think we don't need all these old cargos in that place. We don't need them. Their mentality and their mindset is so wrong. In fact, they are the one causing the division in the country. So I don't know who they are going to lead in 2027. If they are not mobilizing Nigerians to say, you know what, we need to do something about this now. Instead of planning towards 2027. There's no 2027 because people, they buy every day and we cannot continue to fold our hand at the look. You know, that's all that one that said uh, whether they should be uh, uh, negotiating with terrorists. You know, I think he's speaking from for, for himself because they are benefiting from whatever it is that is happening there. They are benefiting because how, how do you explain the fact that I'm not I'm not in support that they go outside to go and watch the dirty liner. No, I'm not in support of that. I'm not in support of that they should go to America and go and try to uh, open their mouth wide there and calling for help. The help they require is a homegrown solution. And those traditional distance is calling and calling. I don't think that would be the that would be is uh, uh, state policing. That will help everybody neighborhood policing what they need to do nigeria need to do is time that they train everybody to be militants it's time you have to train your citizens to be able capable men to carry gun carry colors whatever that's where nigeria need to reach so that they can be self defendant they can defend themselves that's what we need because since in 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 advance these places that's how it is people go they, every 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 boy or every girl they, they make them go through training military training not because they are going to be militaries army no but they train them that basis for self defend you know to defend yourself they train them you know so that's what nigeria need how can you be carrying 500 people 500 people 500 they fall they running running like cows Running like cows and going, go inside where you don't know. None of them is able to say no. Where are we going? Eh? Where are we going? If no one kill even like that, I'm not thinking that go on and carry how many? Maybe if it's too many, maybe it gets hundred bullets. Now it gets when that hundred bullet finish, you go 60 or standing with you. What thing will be that? So please, Nigeria Matai, eh? it, it is just disgusting. So when then that's the direction they should be looking at. Make your people capable. Make your people enable them in every way. Enable them. That's what we need. So we don't need all these leaders that will come and be telling us it's southeast time, it's southwest time, it's not 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 time. You know, we don't need them. Their time has passed. They should retire and, and get out from politics. If they have any advice, maybe. But uh, you know, for them to still be at the helm of things. In their parties i don't i don't think i don't support them they should give young people the chance to take nigeria from this quagmire to where nigeria wants to be mr Evans, i'll leave it there thank you so so much for the opportunity thank you madam patricia thank you for your submission uh it's not easy the way you are saying it though it's not easy uh <laughs> when you see this kind of guns these guys are carrying and uh, you want to shoot your head inside to rush them with the guns and all that <laughs> when you see 30 just 30 on the floor the rest will run back it's not easy that mind is not too easy like that i'd like us to move um oga ferrera uh oga cm if you are there i'd like us to uh take the floor and interact generally this time instead of me calling anybody so anybody can come in and oh, speak oh. Okay, Mr. Elvis, I would like to go next because I want to do a, a good follow-up on uh, what um, Madam Patricia has just said. Um, and she made some very good points. First of all, Mr. Elvis, I want to apologize to you for yesterday as I was talking. I was at work and then the radio system at my work just came on 
<laughs> during oh, live yeah. broadcast. So you you understand with that noise, eh? That's fine, sir. Yeah, yeah. So again, um, before I start, again, every time I get a chance to talk, I want to thank you very much. You might not know it, believe me. I believe firmly that you, you are doing God's work. Other people, like Daily Faroon Timmy, they're doing God's work. Aisha Yusuf, you're doing God's work. Uh, Rudolph Okonkwo, God's work. And uh, Mayegun, and every one of you. The problem of this Nigeria is so deep. Oh, it's even deeper than we all even know. Exactly. And discuss. It's so deep. This thing started from 19, 1954 or whatever, 1440 or whatever, whenever they joined, 1914. Then it continued 1960, and now we are 65 years into a big Iroko tree. Big Iroko tree. So that being said, I, I personally believe that um, the issue being discussed about OB on a TICU meeting, it goes beyond what who is ob or who is atiku as most of their supporters would like to believe obedient and then articulators now the question now is that nigeria is so badly in problem right now that even those that own nigeria the rich are beginning to notice that something down big or bad down the line is going to happen or unless they find a peaceful way to quickly rescue the country from the hand of the hijackers, which is the APC. Because uh, corruption has always been with us, but the rate with which APC took it nationally is an, it's at another level. It's an, an unprecedented level. And the, is leading the country into a, what the Oloibo people we call catastrophic catechism. An explosion is coming, like a volcanic eruption, explosion. So I think the elders, let's call them elders for now, those uh, uh, political juggernauts, which who have also been part of those who betray, are beginning to realize this point. And so they're trying to see if there's a possible merger down the line that they can come up with. Now, I'm not saying there won't be problem if they are successful with it. Remember, um, Mr. Evans and everybody, when the issue of uh, Tinumbu certificate came out in uh, and uh, Atiku made a speech, remember that time Atiku said one statement, nobody took it serious. He said, the problem is so big, all of us have to come together. He was referring to the obedience. Like all of us, he was referring to the obedience. And other major speakers have also said that, the Nigerian problem is so big that getting rid of these APC people is not something you can do easily. Majors has to be formed by team majors, reasonable majors, in order to rescue power from them because they're not going to let it go. You, you, I don't care what anybody is saying. The 2027, they already have the results. So for us to change that, there has to be. And the people are suffering. Naira is going down. Nothing is working, blah, blah, blah. We all know all this. So I think these elders are now beginning to, that's why OB is going to go me now. Whether you like it or not, as an obedient, that OB, why is OB meeting with Atiku? Why is so corrupt? That's not the point. The point is that Atiku, with his PDP, still has a platform and a machinery of about 5 million or 6 million votes or even larger. The same thing, OB, still has his obedient, a machinery of about 5 or 6 million. The other smaller, smaller party like Shogure, all the other unknown people, small, but they don't have that crowd. So there's no way those ones, no matter how make, they make noise, can effect any change in that country. You understand? And then the other group, which is the other silent majority, that has been incarcerated, like can know the separatists, those who want us to separate, those who think those are the solution that are being quiet, those who are speaking, all those are small and they are fragmented. They will do a group, be a group, that group, this group, whatever they want. They are fragmented, they are like a gas, gaseous state whereby they have no shape or form. And for you to wrestle power, believe me, you need to have. You need to be like a, to, to, to even start getting to the wrestling. You have to have you have to have shape. You have to no. You have to have form. That means you must be like a liquid. And eventually, for you to really have the power, you must be like a solid. That means you must have shape 
and form. So no one in that country now that is agitating, nobody has it. The silent majority, which is those of us who argue and talk on, on here every day and do all these things, we are either abroad or doing our thing, which is not going to affect anything in that country. Those who have the jugulars of power have it. Yeah, Madam Patricia was right. We've been doing this turn by turn from 1960, precisely to be honest with you, from the day of the first coup. You understand? Up to now. And it has not helped the country. It has just worsened situation. It's rotation of madness, to, to put it mildly. But for us to move forward, those who still own this country are still own, owning it, the likes of Atiku, the likes of Tinubu, the likes of Obi. Why? Because they have the machinery and the platform. They are in front, and if you don't move them out, you can't get that change or that revolutionary change that we are, we are all yearning for. Now, all these parties exist, but none of them have political ideology. The only thing they know about politics is let us go there and share national resources. In the Western world, Mr. Elvis, sharing national resources is considered a sabotage. In the Western world, those that gave us democracy, sharing national resources is considered treasonable felony, whether you go to Russia, whether you go to China, or whether you go to the United States. Nobody destroy their own country by building castles with the money meant for road. But we do that and we call it politics in Nigeria. And we think we are smart. We are maneuvering each other. But that's what we have been doing. You understand, from 1960, it got worse from 1999. Now, there are tribal issues and religious issues associated with this, but those are not the core problem. I keep maintaining, and I think me and you agree on that one, that the real problem is every Nigerian who wants to share out of this cake. We don't have the mind of baking. And until we build a political ideology that will bake, we will continue to be in this regmaro, this mess. You understand? Which is now God is good. Someone like Obi is on the platform, a little bit different. At least he hasn't gone there to share or loot even though his detractors might want us to believe that. But his detractors are also right. Obi is also part of the same system that produced the likes of Atiku that made them rich. So would they be the real people to bring change? It's possible, at least through peaceful ways, if we are not going to carry on. But they have to form a formidable union against this massive monster called APC. Because this thing... They've taken over every aspect of the society and they are in charge of our banks, your money. So they have the momentum. No amount of political mobilization would beat them. No amount. But as Atiku has said, when, he, when that uh, results thing came out, that we all need to come together. If they can come together, it's not about whether Labour will be leaving Labour Party or article this or that. It's about rescuing that country in the most peaceful way possible, or else we wait for that explosion and everybody goes their own way. Because it will happen, no? Might take five years, might take four years, as the suffering is going like this. It will happen because the looting is not going to stop. It's not going to stop. That's the only thing the people know since 1960. It's the only thing they know, and it's going to continue. Whether it is a Doe election or it is Rivers election or it is Cross Rivers election or it is Lagos election, it's still going to continue. And as long as looting continues, progress will not come to that country. So let's look into the future a little bit now. Let's just say this: whatever these two giants that have a machinery and platform happens, you understand? The problem down the line would be the unequally yoke element that will form it. Because I still believe that even if they are able to form a major to fight against that monster called APC, the group that still believe that politics is about sharing will still have a majority. And that's where, even if they put Obi at the top, that's where Obi will have a problem. 
because no matter how hard he tried, he might try very hard, they will still try to sabotage him because that's their belief. So unless Obi himself, as he forms this merger with these negative people, bad people for now, he himself starts to raise people with the right political ideology. The current Labour Party don't have it. That's why you see the fight of the Arab and Bees, the party chairman and all the madness that goes on. So the issues at hand are really serious. But Patricia is right. We can not continue to do this turn by turn. It has not led us anywhere. And we don't need activists to rescue us. Activists cannot rescue us. But what we need are people who are active. Active. Your active participation might be just in talking on mediums like this. Might be in this, in that, or whatever you do. But you have to be active in joining political parties, in education. So let's not look at this OB Atiku Maja as something, oh, humongously bad or negative. It might be a necessary evil that needs to happen. Because getting rid of APC, my people, it will not be easy, sir. So I still get plenty more to talk, but let me just uh, stop there in case people want to want to add or had their own comment we could exchange ideas and see where the country is where the country is going but definitely we do need a change this cannot continue and explosion is likely down the line thank you all right hello uh, mr ferrera god bless you sir thank you for that uh point by point uh submission Thank you very much. Let's see what others will say. Uh, Augustine, you have the floor. After Augustine, then Mr. Jonathan, you have the floor. Augustine, if you are there, please talk to us. Augustine, it looks like you're not available right now. Let's go to uh, Mr. Jonathan, then we'll come back to you. Mr. Jonathan, good evening to you, sir. It's good to have you on the show. Please talk to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Harris. Um, uh, thank you for the work you are doing. God bless you, and I, I greet all the all the panelists that are with us today. God bless you, all. Um, those that are on the comments section as well. Those that are watching, uh, I greet everyone. Thank you and and welcome. Um, you know, I, in as much as I want to kind of agree, you know, with Mr. Ferreira, you know, it's just that uh, is a, uh, you know, it's just, you know, there are some key issues that, you know, I don't think for me is, is, is a way to go for us in Nigeria. But anyways, but before I even talk on that, you know, there's no way I can start by not talking about these 500 people kidnapped 500 in one sweep in one sweep 500 for, but for me that video that you showed by my own estimate at least <laughs> with my eyes and my head intact uh, they, more, more, they say more than 500 they can't you know the man before even before the nigerian media or the political uh, information managers before they will even accept 500 in Nigeria, before they will accept 500 and not play politics or intimidate the media to come out <laughs> with that number, just just Nigeria that you and I know, just, just know that that number is is two or three times more. Because when 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 it is real 500, they will play it and say there are 80 people or 120 people. When it is real. 300 they will play it and say it is only 50 or 60 people but now that they accept 500 your guess is as good as mine what the real numbers would be 500 in one sweep i think uh madam Pratisha and uh, the other the other panelists they've said you know they've, they've, they've said it you know a lot but i just want to add that we have a serious problem in that country i wish that I can come out and say good things about the government of my country. I really want to. I desire to. It's my. It's, it's what I want. I want to. I want to say something positive. But there is nothing good to say. 
you see, you see the pictures that we see, the, the news that we that comes out every day, there is nothing good to, to, to say about it. And it's like they, they don't care, they don't give a damn. You can do whatever you want to do. We don't we don't care, they just continue doing it. How could 500 people be, be, be kidnapped in one sweep? 500. And we say we have a country. And yet, some people are already coming and saying that security is improving in Nigeria. That is where I want to, I want to, I want to ink my 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 position on on this one. That's where I want to connect my my point on this one on how could people now be saying that security is already improving in nigeria you see how they are taking nigerians for granted they think nigerians are, are morons they are stupid people they are already selling the idea now using using all the power of the media propaganda to now selling out everything is everything is better now security is is if you, you, you are seeing snippet of it all over the place now they want to sell it to Nigeria, shovel it down the throat of Nigerians that security is improving. It is things are getting better. They will soon be telling Nigerians that electricity is improving in Nigeria. That is how they have how they are, how how low they have seen Nigerians. And before you say it, they will also say the military is overwhelmed. How? All those militaries, police officers that you see them in road checks all over, all across the countries. What are they doing? I couldn't say it better than uh, Dr. CN. He said it. And, you know, if there's anything, he has summed it up. We have a commander-in-chief. What is he doing? What is the commander-in-chief doing for crying out loud? Other than going around the place, signing papers, and every other month going on a foreign trip seeking for foreign investment that is not there that will not be there as long as they are still on this trajectory and yet people are buying right at home it's so sickening to see this happening in nigeria i just want them to desist from this from this brutal hypocrisy that they, they, they are playing that security is getting better Security is not getting better anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse and worse every day. Worse and worse every day. They just, in fact, it's so, it's so, it's so annoying. It's so sad seeing this happening in Nigeria. Madam Patricia said, "Look at people running like cows. You just look at that video. Literally, like, like, like animals. See human beings, fellow Nigerians." Women with children at their back, perhaps pregnant women, children, babies on the floor. look at just look at that. That alone is a the government is that one alone is enough for a government to declare a state of emergency right away. The military, I, I mean, come on, isn't that a, a shame? The entire world is watching, the entire world is watching. Those that have seen this video, that have seen this happening, that are outside Nigeria, they are more than those that are in Nigeria. Millions, hundreds of millions of people have seen this. They continue to see it more than the people that are in Nigeria. So the world is the world is seeing what is happening. They know what is going on. They are watching. Where will you see this anywhere in the world? For crying out loud, where? When it's not like the country is invaded, anything close to this that I could relate to this was was the first week that Russia invaded Ukraine. Is Nigeria being invaded by a superpower country? That was the closest. It's like a country that is being invaded by a superpower. When Ukrainians are rushing, they are rushing to the to the Polish to the Polish border. This is the close, that's the only thing. You can only see this in that scenario. A country invaded, being bombarded, both on the air, on the land, on the sea, and people are running. That's the only way. It's not, it's, that is what is happening in Nigeria, literally. 
literally, that's what is happening. The country is invaded. It's being invaded. You can't see this happening in any normal country except there is an invasion, military invasion, both on the land, on the air, on the sea. That people will abandon their homes and everybody will be on the streets just to get out to a safe, to a safe, to a safe, to a safe place. That's what we're seeing in Nigeria happening. It's so, it's so sad. It's so sickening, you know. And let me, let me just leave it out there. Let me, let me leave that there. You know, I, let me end on this. Uh, 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 what I want to say with respect to the major, you know, I, I agree, you know, almost entirely with my brother. But my position, which I have stated on this platform, and I know other people have also stated their opinion in the last few days, even in the last week, with regarding this major team, for me is that I don't see Atiku as someone you can trust. Uh, Atiku saying all of us must come together. For me, it's for himself. It's just for himself. I see a desperate man who wants to get power. Who wants to get to power whatever it takes when we use this this number the, the first thing i noted is that when we you know I, and i continue to notice notice it when people are talking sometimes they use this number mr peter obi has five to six million uh, article has five to six million people it simply means that statistics is not correct using that statistic is simply accepting that mr tinubu won which he didn't. I, 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 can't, I can't use that statistics. That statistics is not correct. Because whenever we use that statistics, we are simply saying that Mr. Tinubu actually won. The numbers given to us by INEC, they are facts. They are true. They are correct, which they are not. That is, that is, that is, that is, the, that is the position there. For me, it is only through a free and fair election that Nigeria can move forward. It is only people-oriented change. A change mounted, led by the people that will take Nigeria forward. A change that is being led by the politicians, that is politicians-oriented, will take Nigeria nowhere. It's as simple as that. It's not going to, for me, it's not going to be a major. The state, look at the political statement, very tricky statement made by Atiku. I will support Peter Obi if one, the presidency of the party is zoned to the southeast, and if Peter Obi is nominated as a presidential candidate of the party. Just look at that. That statement, those two statements, those are, we, we can stay on that for the, for the rest of the day. If we really want to unbundle that statement, that statement is preg is pregnated, and we if we want to, there is no time to unbundle it. For me, what I can say is that that statement simply means that Atiku is still coming in 2027. Nobody is going to take away the presidential candidacy or PDP from him. He's going to fight it, fight to finish. And it tells me that eventually, as far as I know now, now with that statement, I can say now that there will be no major. There will be, if you can read political statement and you can see when this politician speaks in reduce and parables, it takes someone who can really penetrate into it and unbundle, unbundle it. There will be no major. Mr. Peter will be, is smart enough, is knowledgeable enough to enter into PDP. Because if you, you think you will go into PDP, and then Atiku will now say, okay, please just zone it, just zone it to Southeast. At the end of the day, we'll tell you that, yes, I really want to support you, but it was not, they gave everybody the free platform. Everybody, the East, the North, the West can come in and, and contest. I will have supported you, but I'm sorry. So you think Mr. Peter will be stupid, ab initio, to now enter into such arrangement, knowing fully well that it is only when the parties zone it, which is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So there will be no major. So Mr. Mr. Atiku, what he's playing is that he's leaving the field. He's leaving the PDP field for himself and for himself alone. 
in 2027, if care is not taken, he will be the only candidate in PDP uncontested. Nobody will contest with him on the floor of the PDP. Anybody that contests alongside with him, it will just be the fight of David and Goliath. It will even be worse than David and Goliath. You stand no chance. So, Mr. Peter, there, is no, there wouldn't be any major going forward. So, Mr. Peter will be, will be so naive enough to go and enter into a major, leave Labour Party, go back to PDP, thinking in his head that, okay, come 2026, they will zone it to Southeast. It doesn't work like that because Atiku has stated this condition. Yeah, yeah what, what I don't mean to interrupt, I don't want to yeah. interject. I don't, if you yeah. allow me, yes, you, what, I so what, what would what would you okay? If Atiku stands like that now, what would you think is the option now for OB or obedience? Let's not say OB, I don't like making it personal. Hey, I just what, yeah, what's, what's the yeah. option is that the option is that is that what that's house guy that's uh labor. Uh, labor house rep member who was speaking with his two mouths. There is no time to, to dwell on him. There is no absolutely no time. Who was speaking with his two mouths that it will be electoral reform? Yes, I agree with him on that one. It is electoral reforms that will deal with it. A genuine electoral reform that will deal with it. So that, but who is going to bring it? That's where we are now. No, no, no. They are the one. They are see, see. They are the one. They will have to champion it. They will have who, to jump who, you mean the people in the house? I'm talking who, to the people you mean? in the house. Yes, I'm talking about them. If, if yeah, but that's it, a, it, I don't mean to. Yeah, but that's a fallacy. You know that's okay, not fine. Going to I happen. agree. I, I'm not. I, I agree with that also. That to, to a very large extent that that might not happen because the, the, the APC will not shoot themselves in the foot and allow a complete, holistic, and genuine reform of the electoral reform to take place. I agree with that. You know that that probably will not happen. But again, that's why I said everything has to be people oriented. It is only the people. We, but we the people. The, my last question, and I'll keep yes. quiet on you. But we, the people, don't have the machinery or the platform. That's so, where we are so now. Are we going to see? Are we going to slide down? And you know, that's why I our said country, we got to continue careful. this trajectory. No, I know we can well. continue. But what yes. it means is that. If they don't, if we don't give that peaceful process a chance, that's when the see, it is eruption. The same, you, know, would, you know what, my brother? You know what? You see, you yeah. see, it's going to be, it's going to be deja vu. Why? In 20, 20 13, 14, 15, this is exactly when we are going back. Is exactly what happened. That was exactly how APC grabbed Nigeria entirely. This is the scenario. These are these are the arguments. To take power away from PDP, they are they are, they have owed Nigeria in the jugular for almost sixteen years at that time, and people are complaining all over the place. We need to change, and the only way has to be a merger. And it is these people now they came together. You and I know where Nigeria is today now, from twenty fifteen to date. It is the same thing. Yes, the thing though. Yes, my own thinking. Is any will anybody tell me today Nigerian politics today? That given the way it is, Atiku becomes the president, and that Atiku will not play tribalism, Atiku will not play nepotism. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and that Atiku, Abubakar Atiku, that you know, that I know, that we can go back. Let's, to just, let's, just, let's just assume he steps down, like he's saying for yes. OB. What, yes. what do you do? Let's just assume, let's not. We know his character, but let's not yes. dwell on that for now. Okay. Let's just play the devil's advocate and said, like he said in today's release, I will step down for OB if. Let's say all the ifs were checked and yes. he actually did. What, what, yes. what do you yes. see if, going if, forward? If, if, Atiku, if Atiku actually said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to contest. You know, the state, you know what the statement should have been? I will not be running in 2027. Mm -hmm. the, today, 2024, PDP is zoning the presidency to southeast. Let Atiku say that categorically. It's going to southeast. That the PDP is zoning it. Then we will know that Atiku is real. And put it on right. Oh, Everybody sign up. Oh, oh, Mr. Jonathan, if I may just help you add one. Yes. You know, add one line. Or oh, Atiku could have just said, 
I will not be running. I'm stepping down from anything, you know, uh, attempting to become president. I think I've had my, my turn in every, I've had my fair turn. He has been a, a, a vice president before now. Yes. So, so he should have, he could have just said so. So I will support anybody that emerges from my, from our party. Think, oh, then yes. we know his hand is off. No, this yes. one is, a, which means fight to, fight to die. That's what he's telling us. Yes, that's what he's, him or him. he's playing game. Atiku is a very, very tricky man. And I know, I know that Mr. Peter will be is so knowledgeable. He's a smart man, smart man to the core. He's not going to fall for this cheap one. Because you no, know, so you want Mr. Peter will be now to come out maybe next year or there about and say, okay, I'm I'm moving from Labour Party to PDP. So he's going to hold on to Atiku's word. You can't hold on to Atiku's word for all his words. It's worth nothing, it's it's worth less than a piece of paper. Is it not the same party that they agreed that they will zone in 20, this 2023 election? That they will zone it, it will not be the north, the north will not be there, they will zone it to the south. Not even they, as at that time, it was not even specific south is south, it will come from the west, it will come from south, south, it will come from southeast, but it's not the north. This time around, now they are even more specific, they narrow it down. Southwest is out. South South is out. South East. They narrow it down completely. So you can't even go, you can't go further than that. When it did not abide by South, that encompasses almost more than half of Nigeria. If by, by, by real numbers, as far as I know it, in terms of population, I don't go by their fake numbers. The real South Nigeria, when they narrow it to the entire South, Atiku, Atiku reneged. It did not follow through. Is it now that they are now narrowing it down, down, completely to the southeast? That Atiku will now say, "Okay, I'm supporting, I'm supporting the southeast." I don't think so. Going by his antecedents, who he is, is not going. And I don't think that Mr. Peter will be. Who is this? I mean, don't let this. It's too. It's too wise. He's a wise man to accept to go and commit himself. And then come 2027, you will see the real politics will play out. And then Mr. Mr. Atiku will say, my hands are tight. Actually, I really wanted to support you, but it's the party supremacy. The party has decided that they have left it for, for everybody. Anybody can contest. Then you will see the real fight. And then Mr. They, will not, they will not left Mr. Peter will be, all of them will run away because of money will start to play out. And uh, we do that at that time. Yeah, so, so we have to we have to keep thinking of ideas of if that's the case then what's the way forward because yeah, yeah, we can't continue said, like as this. I said as I said see Mr Peter will be as we speak today as we speak today in Nigeria if elections were held today in Nigeria Mr Peter will be a free and fair election if I put that word if yes I have to be aware of that if there is a free and fair election today in Nigeria Mr Peter will be we win landslide landslide election victory you will hands down you will win so but so because the election most likely will not be free and fair so we have to focus on that thing that particular thing that is the issue it is the elect it is the election so when that house man uh, agocha i believe that i don't know if i pronounce his name correctly sorry if i if i if i if i did it but that labor party House member, when he was talking, yes, he came up with some re proposal at least to start from there, and they can even go further. And a country that wants change, true change, I don't think that would be, that should be difficult for the house members, both the Senate and the house, and even the presidency. The president, the way it was swift within 24 hours that he signed the Cyber Security Act that was placed on his desk. Within 24 hours, that's how you will also sign this. He should rather sign this electoral act if placed on his desk as well. Then we will know that he's a true Democrat and is not ready to stay on power. Like his power is not a do or die for him because for him, we know that this Allah is not serve a la carte. He has to have to grab it, you have to snatch it and run away with it. But if indeed he's a true Democrat, he will have no choice but to go along with that electoral electoral changes, electoral reform. When we have that electoral reform in place, 
Nigeria comes out and votes. The statistics of six five for Obi, six five million for Atiku, it doesn't hold water at all. On a good day, that last election, Mr. Peter Obi had nothing less than 10 to 11 million votes. If the, if the real votes were counted, everybody knows that in Nigeria. But it was changed because they manipulated the electoral, the electoral system. They, and, and they were backed up by the judiciary. And they, ran, they, they, they grab it. They snatch it, they grab it. But they are finding it difficult now to run away with it because we are seeing it now. You can grab it, you can snatch it. We are seeing nothing now. You, have, you can't run now. You cannot run. Where are you going? It's so sad. The, the, it has just started in Nigeria. This, this Shege, as, 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 as some people call it, has just started. There is, no, there, is no, there, is, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You can't see any. If anything, in fact, see, these guys don't have any, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. It's like they are throwing everything, every, 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 every stick at the wall, looking for which one that will stick. Cyber security levy, it didn't work. They sat down again. Let's use the pension. Let's use the pension money. It's not going to work. They already, they've seen the language on the wall that that one also is not going to work. What are they going to do next? I believe that they are, can you imagine? These people can go ahead and increase the interest rate again. In the next few days, they can do that because that's the only way they will go. Because they did it in January, it worked for them. When they did it in January, it worked. They got some money, and then we started seeing the dollar and the pounds coming down. That's the only choice. I, I don't see anything because it's, it's easy. You can preempt them. You can see what is happening in Nigeria. It's very, they are very easy to be preempted. You can know the next move. It's like a game of chess. I can I know the next move of the Nigerian government. That's their next move because there is no way to go now to get money. It's to now increase. They will, they will do that again. Nigerians will be paying 30%, 35% interest rate. God help us because that's the only way. That one, nobody will challenge them. You see the cybersecurity, everybody came out, we challenge them. You see the pension, we all came out, we challenge them. When they do the interest rate, you and I cannot challenge them. We can only talk. They will do that one. So that they can also get some cheap money in again. So he has grabbed it, you know, he has snatched it, he cannot run. It's like his, his hands and legs are as in glue, glue. He can't do it, they can't do anything in that country as we speak right now. Insecurity is 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 is, is getting worse and worse every day. 500 people kidnapped in one sweep, as if as if. Banana Republic is even better than this one. I don't know what to call it. Isn't that, isn't that a, sh a shame? And the, nothing from the nothing from the federal government of that of the country after five hundred people kidnapped. Nothing. Anyways, um, let me also leave it, please, and uh, so that the other panelists can come in. I really appreciate the time and the opportunity. Uh, thanks to all the panelists. I appreciate it. Thanks. Nagaosh, are you there? Uh, Mr. Dr. CM, are you there now? It's not there. I think the next person is okay. uh, just a minute. Um, oh, 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 you're not there. Can I, can I go ahead? Prince Collins. Yeah. Yeah, Prince Collins, please speak to us. Good evening and welcome to the channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone. I've been listening to us. I came in at the middle of... Uh, the program, you know, I just decided to listen carefully so that I know what's, what is really at stake. Uh, apart from what is written on the board, I've been able to get some uh, vital information through the discussion that have been made so far by the panelists. First, I want to say good evening to everyone, wherever you are watching from. I want to say we appreciate you from every corner where you are watching from. We want to say thank you for what you are doing and continue to press the like buttons and uh, make good comments so that uh, our program will go far and reach those that are supposed to be reached. 
So I would say that I don't want to dwell too much on the insecurity of Nigeria because I've, I've always said this in this channel that uh, it's going to get worse until the right thing is done because you can't do the wrong thing and get good result or the right result for you to 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 improve you have to innovate uh, you can't you can't get improvement without innovation so if nigeria want to uh, change the narrative of uh, situation of nigeria there is need for nigeria to you know carry out good innovations positive innovations that will bring about positive change so this is just the beginning things are going to get worse that's the truth if the right thing is not be done so the outbreak of uh, insecurity is the least word that we will use right now because we're going to use the worst word this is, we can even see these days that people terrorize they kill they 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 they, they, they do havoc but they will call them bandits so that's to tell you that uh, the thing has become the norms of the day. Just as uh, our last speaker said, it's a disgrace, it's a shame, it's a great disappointment to Africa as a whole. So I would say that I want to quickly talk on the area of uh, uh, merging or uh, article issue or statement I made. So, uh, you see, the only thing that would change Nigeria actually is electoral reform, just as uh, somebody has said before. I think it was uh, Jonathan that said that. Until that is done, uh, we can't really get people oriented the transition. People oriented transition cannot take place because it is going to be truncated at all times. Uh, let us not forget that the uh, power of occupancy plays a very important role in Nigeria election. And Nigeria is the only country where I, where I found out that power of occupancy plays more than 70% of the role of what happens at the end of any transition or election. So if we look at it vividly, we have the executive, legislative, judicial arm of federal, state, and local councils. These are the machineries of election manipulation in Nigeria. People that are in these positions at various stages, federal, state level, the legislative, executive, and the judiciary, they are the machineries that be used to manipulate Nigeria election. These are the people that truncate election in Nigeria. These are the people that, that toward the effort of the, 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 the mandate of the people. These are the people that make Nigerians, voters become useless. They make them to become not a useful material. The exercise that is taking place every four years by way of transition, they waste this effort and they truncate this thing and give it to themselves. So if we talk, if we are talking about OB, Working about uh, the obedience becoming a, rea a reality, we have to know that obi as a person cannot do it alone. For him to become a president of Nigeria, he can't do it alone. First, for him to get there in whatever means, using the present fraudulent system that I, that I just mentioned, these machineries, he has to belong to this. I mean, he has to, you know, fuse himself into this 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 uh, system. Let us not forget that it is the same system that, that brought him into power while he became the governor of uh, uh, Anambra State. Let us not forget that after he became the executive governor of Anambra State, because he was not working alongside with what, or rather, he was not, you know, doing what the 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 the, the stakeholders wanted. 
they, he was impeached twice. I stand to be correct. He was impeached twice and he came back and he did all he did against the wish of this uh, cabal, this political cabal, and for the people. And that is what brought him to the stage he is today. And let us not forget that the election that brought Yaradwa in, Yaradwa himself, late Yaradwa, his blessed memory, said that the election that brought him in, the transition that brought him into uh, pre presidency was fraudulent, that he wanted to change that, that narrative. Before the way Nigeria is today, in as much as they are not ready to do this reform, because when they do this reform, it will be to their own detriment. In as much as they are not ready to do this reform, the only way a good person can become the president of that nation is to use the same machineries. Let me say something. We lose the last election because this same cabal, this machinery that I just mentioned at the executive, legislative, and judicial level, state and federal, state, federal, and local councils, we are those that work against this the 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 the, 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 the reality of the people's mandate in this last election. These are the people that work against the people's mandate because the vote was cast at the look at, at the ground level. The masses did their best, but at this level, we didn't have this machinery to protect this vote till the last minute. That was why we lose. Because we didn't have this machinery, we could not fight to protect our votes to the lab. Before we even know, before while we were sleeping, they manipulated everything and gave the certificate of return to whoever they gave it to. That is the power of occupancy and cabal that I'm talking about. They are still there and they will never allow this reform to take place because it will be to the out detriment. And once this reform is done, bam, the next election that comes in, whether at the state, federal, or local council, would be as clean as a white cloth because reality is going to take place. So for me, I still believe that the only way is for Obi to work with whoever comes in come his come, come, come way that is in the system of this, in, in this fraudulent electoral system, who, those that are participating in it, you need to come in with them in his wisdom. He knows how to play, you know, he, he knows very well how to play the game. He's a professional in it. He knows what he's doing. We can't avoid him or make him avoid certain people because those people have no good records. Because if you look at Nigeria in totality, 70% of Nigerians have no good record, most especially those that are in political power. They don't have good records. Because they, they, they are personal interests confessed before the, 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 the wish of the people. So he can't get there until he's in this system. They put him there, then he's going to do what he's going to do. So for him to merge with whoever that is coming, in as much as they will allow him to represent or be the flag bearer of the party, the candidate of that party, I support that move. Because that is the only way he can get there. Because... The people that will go and truncate, I see the, the people that will go and truncate the effort of the masses, the votes of the masses where they go into the rain, sun to cast their, their vote. The people that will truncate it are these people at this various level. They are always there waiting to do the last thing. We were surprised to hear that the, the, the machine didn't work for them to, to, to transmit results. We all grumbled for a long time. We wept. 
I went into depression for this purpose. I can't say everything because I thought the electoral, electoral reform that was done before the 2023 election was a reality. And I was so confident that Nigeria is going to change. I was getting prepared. But they made us to understand that we are jokers. And I had to go back to my past uh, thoughts about Nigeria. Because they, they made me to understand that whatever plan I'm making is a waste of time. So let us not forget that until this electoral reform is done, Nigeria cannot change. And for Nigeria to change, it has to be done as quick as possible. Or else, if you have to follow this same uh, fraudulent transition program that they have there, if you have to follow this same uh, INEC, Independent Electoral uh, uh, Commission that is not independent, we we'll have to fall into that system where we cast the votes for them to protect that vote. Please round up. Kindly round up. Thank you. I'll stop, I'll stop there. Thank you very much. I appreciate everyone. Okay. okay. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Uh, let me call on Mr. Uh, uh, Madam Patricia, please. Yes? Yeah, can I just say one, just 10 seconds, please? Okay. Yeah, just I just want to add to what uh, Mr. Collins was saying. Is it the electoral reform that we're talking about? Even yeah. as it is right now, this electoral reform, as it is, that 2023, the one we used last year, is okay, it's fine. If we have, let me just put it straight, God-fearing people in Nigeria, it is okay. The only part of it that they use against us in 2023 and that they can just go ahead and, and change right now or amend right now, is that from the polling unit when people vote any vote any polling unit that does not upload that one is what no election there that they don't upload after the election there there is no election there in addition to what that house speaker said that then INEC will now have 14 days to send all the electoral mat the certified true copy of all the polling unit as uploaded, as uploaded, no difference to the Supreme Court. Period. Okay. And that's thank that, you. Only, that, that. Thank you, Madam. Okay. Thank you so so much. Uh, please let us take the likes to two hundred. We have one hundred and eighty and nine. So we we yeah eighty three. Please, we only lack. 17 likes so if you're just joining us kindly press on the thumbs up to get it up to 200 thank you so so much let me call on mr oduwa to speak okay. to us good evening okay. and welcome good evening ma hey. good evening everyone mr najawash commenters listeners and viewers all the panelists mr moderator and mrs moderator Happy weekend to all. Um, I just heard um, that uh, Article 1 to support will be if the PDP zone their uh, distance to east, east of the Nigeria. Well, it's good thing, it's good idea. And uh, maybe if the PDP bring Peter Obi act as a candidate it's still good it's not bad and me myself i will even support mr ob if my if my party zone it to the east and if my party bring out ob as their candidate also and i believe another people party will also support when they give it to east the truth is everybody like good thing the PDP were unaware that Peter Obi will gain momentum if he leave their party. If they were aware, they would have not allowed him to go. Is it not? The, uh, I heard that one of our sisters said that Peter Obi 
have the chance to become vice president under Article 1 and still left the PDP. Before OB left PDP, Article 1 decided who will become his vice. Not or uh, the party have de decided who will become the advice. It was not Peter Obi who will have be the vice, even though if a particular will have be the one who won the, the uh, this thing of that party. So the truth is, let people bring out their view that Peter Obi is going back to PDP. Peter Obi did not say I'm going back to PDP. Right from then, PDP started crying that they never knew that Peter Obi we have influence the way we have. They will have made sure you will don't leave their party. So they try to convince people, even in the north, they were printing poster that Peter Obi is still contesting under article. So everyone want to deceive who they can deceive and said Peter Obi is PDP. Peter Obi has left PDP, just like the way he left Aga. So maybe. If he leave Labour Party tomorrow, maybe he's coming to my party. So let nobody say he's returning back to PDP or he's returning back to Afghan or he's returning back to Peter. Or think Peter will be said, or think Peter will be say, I am leaving this party. This is where I am going to. So everybody will like to attract what is good to their self. So let all of them begin to say Peter will be, Peter will be, Peter will be. Well, uh, APC government did not do well. They are shutting Peter Obi. When APC government did not uh, uh, put, they are shutting Peter Obi. So everybody are shutting Peter Obi because it's the new move, moving train. As you people who talk English might call it. So that is what we are all seeing. So let please, Mr. Najawash, don't tell us that Peter Obi is ready, is now negotiating for PDP that nobody will support him. And for those who said with the major, let Peter B go back to PDP, it is your, you have your choice to choose. But Peter B did not say so. And we who understand visions that can interpret physical dreams, not the dream you have in sleep, know that Peter B have not said so and he will not do this, he will not do likewise. So, what makes him to left PDP is still there. The foundation of PDP did not destroy. Not to talk of, they have rebuilt it in, in different materials. <coughs> so we all we are facing for the better this thing. Anyway, I did not watch the video, but I heard that this security that they kidnap. First, I said Nigeria is not a country. Right from time I'm been saying Nigeria is not a country, and that is why I praise one the canoe called Nigeria a a, a, a zoo. I say he give Nigeria a great name that people will have be clapping for him and celebrating him. They started fighting that why most think called Nigeria is home. Nigeria is a white forest where white animal ate their prey. Nigeria is not. Zoom is a great place that everything work accordingly. What I'm saying, the people who are occupying any position, whether it's the, the judge, whether it's the, the teacher, whether it's the, the bus driver, whether it's the bank people, wherever position, the people who are at the tops are not worthy to be leaders. Because if they are worthy to be leaders, their duty will have been performed the way it's supposed to be. The, the judiciary is the problem. Of it. No, it is not only the judiciary. Or as many who are positioned themselves as a leader. That is the problem we have. Or in the Nigeria have good people who are in top positions as leaders. The country will not go anywhere. Not all these one who go to the seat of greediness, who feel that they were being oppressed, so they are not, it's not their turn to oppress others. Or who feel that the money they have, they are going to be eating it in their grave. Or the money we are going to acquire from this country, we will give it to, or we will, uh, we will be using it in our grave. Not those kind of people. When such people occupy position, the country will not go anywhere. The only people that we occupy position are the person who feel that if I have two house, it's too much. Can I sleep in two rooms the same time? If I'm sleeping in two rooms the same time, 
Are people not going to call me madman? So that is only the people who will make the country go the way it's supposed to be. It is Nigeria I found that one person who call himself, whether minister, whether leader, or in any position, if we have five cars, 10 cars, how many are you driving? Before you know that cash is no longer in, in the market. Then if we still buy another one, is that not madness? So the people, the well, well let me not use so much words because uh, I forgot that I'm a Nigerian man. Something like that. Not the people went ahead, not correct. One person go get that many motor. Where did that they go? One person go they build house. Then tomorrow they'll say hungry day. He built 50 hours. Who will they build them for? For his children. Those children come, they'll come build another one. Who did they build them for? They'll say people they suffer. Why they not go suffer? When people they too much greedy. 30 seconds more. Uh -huh, thank you. No need. Let another person have their flow. Okay, thank you, Mr. Odua. Nigeria is a what? It's a white forest. Thank you. I agree with you on this time, on this case. So, you know me and you, we always get our own for this case. Yes, but anyway, <laughs> Mr. Duwa, <laughs> it is well. <laughs> I want to greet, uh, let me say a shout out to Destiny Weibo. Welcome to the broadcast. And also to uh, Madam Ame Bright. Good evening to you, Madam. Great to see you. Um, please do click on the thumbs up if you're just joining us now. Kindly click on it. Thank you. God bless you. Mr. Black Panther, welcome to the channel. And of course, Chris Dublin, welcome. But now I'm going to give Mr. C. And Mr. C, and you left before. Thank you for coming back. Please speak to us. It's your turn. Mr. CN, Dr. CM, are you there? It just seems he's there. Okay, so uh, let me move to Mr. Chris Dublin. Please speak to us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. First, first okay. First of, first of all, I must apologize. I must apologize to everybody. Actually, my system crashed. And then, oh, yeah. We're so, we're uh, when it resolved itself, when, when it suspect, when it resolved itself, I find myself uh, uh, at uh, Black Panther's Lodge. That is a uh, backstage. So, See, I'm British, British system, they <laughs> crash. No, they should. <laughs> you know the shame British system they crash. Since I, since, uh, since, Where is your since, backup? Where is your crashed, backup? A crash. We know they fight war here now, so we know they get back up. In America they fight war, they they get back up. So anyway, the thing is, I think uh, so far well, while I was at the backstage, because I've been there for long. Jonathan, thank you very much for all you said about Atiku. That is about give or take. 85% of what I wanted to say. I don't know how you just, like, you read my mind. First, my opening salvo is that, you said it, Atiku cannot be trusted. He's a great tribalist in politics. And you said it, you said it, you said so. This was a man at the heat of 2023. Because sometimes, you know, what he's promising P2B, uh, if you do this, do that. He's just trying to woo P2B, say, if you come back to PDP. That's what, he's not interested. If P2, if, if the idea is Labour and uh, P2B be in Labour, I be in PDP, let's form an alliance. He doesn't want it. He just feel like he wants to woo P2B indirectly, say, Peter, come to PDP. And uh, if the zone you take, all those ones are just like uh, the promise anybody can make anyhow. So, to that extent, Atiku cannot be trusted. Here was a, here is a man that last year at Arewa House, what they call Arewa House in Kaduna, he assembled the cream de la cream of northern political uh, uh, stakeholders and leaders of thoughts. He said, 
the North won't vote for Igbo, Igbo candidate. The North doesn't don't don't want Yoruba candidate. He said this thing. People can uh, people can correct me if they feel I'm not, I'm not making it up. Such a leader, and you've been a vice president of a country for eight years. How dare you? Why should you say that? And he said it openly. At the time, Peter B was saying, "Don't vote for me because I what you still I'm Igbo, I'm a Christian. We don't Igbos don't buy bread cheaper than Fulani or Yoruba or Hausa." Christians don't buy bread cheaper than Muslims or the other way around. And yet Atiku is talking about it. We don't. Atiku was the architect of throwing this thing open. You know, there was a, a, a this thing, a narrative going around that uh, Wike doesn't want P2B. That's why Wike said they throw it open, all this, all that. It was Atiku. They said Atiku promised, said, I will withdraw, I won't contest if he's zone to. Not south, but southeast. It was a lie. There's a man called Kachi on Onuju. I listened to him on the program. He said, when the thing was making round, they sent a journalist to Atiku. Go and ask him if he said it. The man Atiku said he never said something like that. I'm telling you the truth. So there are a lot of things I don't even trust in. Going forward, because Obi hasn't said anything, that all these ones we are saying is speculation. Like uh, somebody said, Obi is smart. I mean, you can't just say uh, uh, somebody like that who refused to be corrupt. You must be very smart, particularly in Nigeria. Going forward, whatever I suggest here is my own suggestion. I don't know. Obi will still do what he wants to do. To me, when the uh, auditing uh, auditors that are auditing a labor account presents their what they want to present, then they will not use it. Obi should, that is when Obi will put his foot down. In Labour Party, and then insist and with Dave, with uh, what, what is the governor of Abia State, and with what he's doing, they have to flush out so many bad eggs. Obi should be in. Obi should not go back to PDP. I don't. I don't even want it, because sometimes the 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 thinking in PDP is that if Obi had been there, you know, you want to use somebody as a good way, good. Uh, they mean good. Uh, what is it called? How do they say it? Uh, feel good factor. Obi should not go back at all. I've said it. If you want to form a new party, good. But to go back to PDP for what? As if because you can't win the president. He won it with Labour. So if if 2027 should come to a reality, Jonathan also said it, and they have said it before. The only electoral reform I will subscribe to. I don't care who is the what is the name, who is the um, uh, I make chairman. People might be surprised I'm saying this. The thing is, at every polling unit, if after voting, whether if it lasted for 10 hours or 10 or 10 minutes or whatever, the party agents tallies the result, say these ones are voided, these ones are good, and then they tabulate it, and then party according to party. And they all agree and sign the form. If it, that result cannot be uploaded live there in real time, it is as good as all those efforts is waste. We don't want to hear anything from that pulling unit. Why it should be uploaded is the moment it's uploaded, your friend in Norway, Denmark, anywhere you are, America, Brazil, Australia, you can go to INEC server and then you see it there. All that it takes is that for INEC to now say, okay, we open the startup. Even you can tabulate it. You know the one from your village. You know, after all, the INEC officials, ad hoc they use, our fraud, our brothers and sisters. You either know somebody who is an NYA, a youth copper that they used, or people they train. It's not all the thing that are the real uh, on the day. It's ad hoc stuff they use. So we've, and everybody there is waiting with his Android phone. They've all voted and they know the result. You just upload it. When you upload it there, that's all. It's as so you don't need to tell us again uh, you are going to collation center. Collation center, yes, you are going there just to look at it. You open the state, Benway State, um, you open uh, maybe you mark out the local government, the so 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 you start uh, you start copying it. That's what they need to do. If for any reason, because they will say glitch, uh, if there is a glitch, you know, no result. You know, before they used to snatch ballot box. If you snatch ballot box, you change it with the one they've stuffed. Remember, 
2003, 2007, they stuffed van. You know, do we talk of that one anymore? Because the moment you snatch ballot box with your thugs, you just shoot, shoot in the air, bah, 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 people will disappear. Then you snatch ballot box. The moment you do that, it will be announced that that a pulling unit result is cancelled. So no result. Do you see it? That's why people are no longer snatching. Is no, have you heard of snatching ballot box anymore? Before then, beavers. So if we cannot, that same, that 24 hours or that day we are going to do the election, we cannot upload it in real time. All of them cannot fail at the same time. The one where failed, the one that failed, no, res, no, no, no election took place. Everything there is zero. Well, even if you go and present the form, say, no, no, we don't need it. We want to do something electronically from there because everybody now transfers. Even if in any, the remote part of the north, there, there's no banking system. The remote part of the southeast or southwest, there's no bank. People use their Android phone to do, um, what is it called, bank transfer, isn't it? They do it. So why can't it be uploaded? Is it not technology? So that is the only electoral. I don't care who is INEC chairman. If we insist on this, INEC chairman is same material. As long as you allow the vote, I mean, you allow people to go and vote that day, the result is from your pooling unit. That is where it should issue is, is determined. We know who win and who didn't win. It's a question, it's a case, a question of every people. Will, if you if you like, you go there and open up and see. If you want to know the match, the result of the re, um, football match is played in the premiership this year, maybe in January 15 or January any Saturday in January or February. You go to uh, what is it called? Um, FA, FA, uh, um, website. Type in premiership match between Everton and Liverpool. So, so they, they, if you just give the result is there permanent, and you look at the league table last year, is there. So that's what we want. We don't want a situation whereby people will mess up. If they do not agree to this reform, you know, it then means that Nigeria they don't know because you have to have, you have to first of all for Nigeria to move forward, you should allow the people to elect who they want. That person the people want, if he's done free and fair, can still be an arm robber, but it doesn't mean. The most important thing is that you allow the person, you allow the people to do their wish. And not for you to promise them you want an angel until you rig it. So it, it, it won't work. So that is the only thing I can add in all this uh, article 20 and 2027. I'm not interested in all those things. Then let me just keep this thing I, I leave. Fubara and Wike. Everybody is talking about uh, who this is. I'm not interested. My interest is if Fubara, who said it, if I talk, let him tell us how they dribble to be, how they stole Labour Party vote. That is the only thing the man I want to hear. Not whether you change commission or you fire week, or you bond. I'm not interested in all those shit. All I want is, now that they want to say catharsis, he want to sort of divulge information. Tell us how you people rigged P2B out by the presidential election. That's what I want to tell us how you people did it. That is what I want to hear from Fubara. Because we can not say it. That's all I want to hear. Whether uh, your people are supplying it, because it's a two thieves, you know, when they disagree like this, eh? Uh -huh. So they are both of them are thieves to the people of Rivers. No, no, nobody is cheaper than nobody is uh, um, uh, um, sort of cleaner than the other. But all I want is tell us on the day of the election how you people suppressed. Uh, Labour Party's vote and what really happened to Labour Party. Just say it the way they did in Lagos. You say your own. That's all I want to hear. Apart from that, I'm not interested in. I'm not. I'm, I'm not interested in reverse affair at all. It doesn't. It's a waste of time. They are both of them are thieves. Thank you. Thank you so so much. I believe Fubara has heard you. So Fubara, you heard him very loud and clear. Come and tell us how you you and Wiki managed to give 5.4 uh, 5 million votes from rivers to mm. apc we are interested APC. in that yeah. so thank you um mr bright strassen welcome to the channel today please click click on the like button if you have not done so and of course subscribe to the channel and also give uh, buy mr Elvis a cup, cup of coffee it's important the laborer is worthy of his wages Thank you so so much. Can we hear from the next person? And that is supposed to be Mr. Chris Dublin. Yeah. Thank you. Good evening. Chair, You're welcome. Chair, 
Chair Lady, good evening, Madam. Um, yeah, it's really nice to be with you guys again. Uh, I consider this um, a privilege to be able to talk to Nigerians um, concerning the issues um, that bothers our hearts. Um, before I start, I want to thank Mr. Nigerian for the opportunity, for the platform that he has given us to be able to air our views. And uh, Madam Patricia, thank you for hosting this uh, panel today. Everybody on the comment section, Mommy Diaspora, and all the wonderful people there, I greet you. And everybody listening to us from all over the world, uh, special greetings to you all. Um, it's nice to share the same uh, cyberspace with you guys. And Mr. Ferrari, I welcome you back after a long time. It's nice to have you. Yeah, well, for thank me, you. I'll, yeah, I'll just try and make this as short as possible. I think uh, uh, the drift. I'll just follow along the drift that uh, most people have um, also uh, followed on this uh, particular discourse. But for me, I want to particularly stick to um, what the topic says, um, whether it's if, if it's okay for Article for Peter Obi to work with Article or not. And like Mr. Ferreira said, let's assume every all the ifs are satisfied. Let's assume. Atiku is going to be a good boy, but we know that is quite impractic impracticable considering his antecedents. So let's assume everything is ticked. For me, the answer is straight away yes. I think Peter B um, can work with any person for that matter, not just the PDP. He can work with any person for that matter um, to, um, to rescue Nigeria from the hands of these vampires that are currently in charge of the nation if only he is allowed to uh, be in charge of any of those kind of alliance and um, he shouldn't just be there as um, a second fiddle so if he's allowed to take lead of that alliance that no matter what the alliance is then peter b should be at the forefront it should be at the plum position so if that condition is met i think um, every other thing is fine by me but um be that as it may, it is highly impossible. Chris? Or oh, is he me? Hello, Chris. Can anybody hear me? Chris? Yes, we can hear you. Mr. Chris, can, uh, it looks like we can hear you. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. It's good. Chris, it's like uh, they've attacked you. You are you are attacking at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's why, dead, why go why go the attack at you? <laughs> no, no, not... You know the okay, mind that... business now. I'm no, not, I'm not why attacking. Go... We are <laughs> we are just saying it the way it is, my brother. Because uh, the Nigeria situation is quiet, quiet, um, unfortunate. Now, remember the, the Deborah's tweet that Atiku had to delete, and he was giving every every silly, every kind of excuses, silly excuses from left, right, and center. That shouldn't be the character of a leader that we deserve at this, um, uh, this time of our nation. You know, we need somebody that sh can be able to unify everybody together i think he's a tribal bigot the tribal and the religious bigot and that's quite obvious so concerning the alliance like i said i, I understand the apprehensions and the skepticism but i think we have to consider this as um more or less a necessary move and um, for uh, the greater good of our nation you know it's a move to counter this evil it's like a necessary evil that can ensure that our nation emerge um, a better nation from this crisis. Because what are these crises we are talking about? Just take two or three of them. Is it uh, economic instability? Mr. Jonathan has spoken copiously about the, the falling currency, the falling value of the Naira, and the, the kind of uh, economic polit uh, politics economic politically they are playing around with um, our national currency and looking at the fact that Nigeria is 200, 200 million people are still counting 
you know, and these people just wake up, voodoo statistics, they are not sure of what they are doing. It's Mr. Ferrari that said that, that they are like gas-like, they don't have form, they are just floating, they are not in the solid state, they don't know what they are doing. Is it in the area of insecurity? We can see per pervasive insecurity everywhere. The 500 people that was just kidnapped, I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many unreported incidences going on everywhere in the country, everywhere. And these guys, it's obvious they are not ready. People are just, they just go about as if nothing is happening. Life doesn't mean anything to any of these leaders. What about the rampant corruption? We've never seen corruption at this level before in this country. Is it the coastal road I want to talk about? Imagine a, a road that is worth 15 trillion naira. I think Mr. and Jonathan put that at 13 billion dollars, you know? So by now it is more than 15 trillion because at then the value of the naira has not depreciated to this extent that we have now. So it was very instructive that um, Mr. Jonathan placed it at dollars because that's a more stable currency. So at 13 billion dollars, this the same it for for how many kilometers 700 kilometer where there's a road all the way from egypt to south africa yeah. to cape town to cape town in south africa yeah, and that road is ten thousand kilometers and that road is costing about 1.7 billion dollars and true. we all go about as if these things are normal and you see people defending things like this all the people what we are all saying like what peter will be said was that the road, nobody is saying the road is not important, but the, the circumstances surrounding the road, is that what we need by now? That's number one. And even if you must uh, give out that kind of contract, what about the due process? What are those things for? And the, there is a body that's supposed to, uh, you know, to ensure that there's fairness in the way uh, contracts are allocated. What's the function of that body? And what about the conflict of interest with his son there? In the board of the Shagori group. So you see, these were the things that people were talking about. And when Peter Obi spoke up as the lone voice of the opposition and they turned it to a southeast, wherever, wherever, ego, wherever, wherever. And I think we make the same statement at the same time, but they were not bold enough to even attack Atiku. They were all just dancing around Peter Obi. Yeah. If Peter Obi drinks water, it's a problem. If he drinks tea, it's a problem. If he doesn't drink, it's a problem. So in this alliance, for me, I'll just stick to it the way it is. If it is going to work, I think we should all trust, like I said yesterday, on the leadership of uh, Peter Obi, because eventually, if you don't trust, it will be difficult for you to um, give your votes to any person. Because the whole essence of election is we donating our individual power to one person to go and carry out what we trust is going to do for us. So that's the whole essence of election and electionary campaign. So Peter will be from his track record, if he's allowed to lead that pack, I think his integrity, his efficiency, and his visionary leadership ought to have spoken for him, and which, in the true sense of it, has spoken for him, because this guy has demonstrated that he can do it. As a former governor, he demonstrated an unwavering commitment to what? the key indices of governments, and that's transparency, accountability, and the welfare of the people. You know, his tenure was marked by significant improvements in every facet of development. Is it education, health care? Is it standard setting for good governance? Until today, the things, the, the infrastructure laid in education is still yielding fruit in Anambra State. Look at what yeah. children from that state, what, are, what they are still doing across the continent of Africa and everywhere in the world. The, 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 the foundation he laid is still functioning well, still producing all-rounded uh, young, young people, preparing them for the next level of education. And moreover, his leadership style is precisely what Nigeria needs at this critical junction. So him aligned with any person in order to take power should be something that all of us should support in any way we can. But we know the way it is, Article, the PDP, it's going to be very difficult. They are going to mess him up because any attempt, if he goes to the PDP, what they are going to do is simple. He gets to that time, they are not going to give him the ticket. And at that time, he cannot go back any longer because if he goes again, who is going to take him serious? That was uh, the submission of uh, Madam uh, Patricia here. 
percent that you move left, right every time. So it's going to take you serious. And moreover, Tikunad is putting a big precondition, which is if. You mm. see, if is a very big precondition. Now let's look. Look at Atiku as a person. We know Atiku has a big influence in the PDP. He controls the like of Saraki, Sule Lamidu, and all the other uh, 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 foot soldiers. So why is Atiku not coming out to tell us that he's going to ensure that the ticket is zoned to the southeast? He will do everything possible. But he's also putting a precondition as if his hands are tied, as if he's incapacitated in the, in the functioning of the PDP. Is it not clear? Now, the current leadership of the PDP, in two years, their tenure will be expiring. That's the wicked boys. They will all be going. And Atiku will have the opportunity of fostering the leadership of the PDP. And they will just play uh, to, uh, uh, Atiku. They will, uh, sorry, Peter, but they will play him along. And if he gets to a critical juncture where he can no longer go back, you tell him that, unfortunately, we cannot zone this to the southeast. And by then, Peter Obi's political career would have been thrown and thrown to the wings. So I think um, in moving place. forward, we, 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 we ought to recognize um, that policies often involve difficult choices and strategic alliances. And this is just one of that difficult choices that needs to be made in order to move forward. You know, it's not just only about um, <clears throat> Peter Obi and joining forces with these guys, not really because of the votes, people's votes per se, but because of that infrastructure. That is the fear that these political big wigs will bring to the table. And Mr. Jonathan clearly said, if we are saying that Peter Abidi didn't have enough votes, then it, it means we are relying, we are validating the, val, the, right. the votes that in there can allocated to Peter Abidi, which That's shouldn't true. be. What we should be talking about is how we can protect the votes that he already before and I think uh, yeah Miss Prince Collins also alluded much to that fact that he was shocked when almost went into depression that this vote could not be protected so the idea is not really about joining these forces together to get more votes but the idea should be the protection of votes because if those votes have counted the vote is told I think Peter uh, Abi's vote would have been more, more, more than eight million. And Mr. Uh, Dr. CM, if you were here four days ago, I can to that fact also that people that are clapping for Fubara. Okay, um, I don't see, I don't really see any reasons between Fubara um, and Peter uh, and what's his name again? Um, Wiki, Wiki, what's his name? Wiki. Wiki, because they are all the same. They are both as yeah, yeah they, are, they are both as thick as tips. You can't be telling yes. us that you want to prove Wiki. Uh, for the funds, whatever. What about the election that brought you to power? You start from there. Exactly. You cannot come with holier than thou. In short, the first thing you even have to do, if it's really corrupt, corruption free, is that it's it should going, be going, from going, that going. So please, uh, <laughs> okay. in the next section, I'll just continue and wrap this up. Well, thank you all for giving me the opportunity to contribute and thank you all for listening. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. I'm wondering where the bell is. I had to use my mouth. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, Mr. Blankpata, please come through for hey. us. Hey, Nogi. How are you doing, Mama? I'm great, so Thank you. Talk to us. Mr. I right. want to thank uh, Mr. Nanjawash, especially, for giving us this privilege. I want to thank him for doing a great service to his motherland. I want to thank our mother, our mother in general, I want to thank you, Mama in Diaspora. May God bless you. And I want to, you know, especially thank everybody, all the patriots here. I don't call you by name, but I call you guys patriots. Because it only takes the heart that loves a nation that will come here passionately without no withering to stand. Whether they won the election or whether they cheated us, but see stand on that trajectory that, yes, we can do it. And that is the audacity of hope. I want to thank every one of you here because I see you all as patrons. And uh, at, the, at the tail end, we, are, we might lose some, but let the rest of us keep the flame, you know, burning. I want to say here to, tonight that um, I'll keep on asking that question because I believe in asking that question, as philosophers say, when you ask that question, when you ask a question, 
it is left for the person to go and meditate and decide on it. And I have to ask this question, is Nigeria a nation? And that question goes to every man that is seated right here, out there, wherever you are in all the nations of the earth, is Nigeria a nation? I want you to go and do that research because you take it to so many nations and what brings about a nation and what gives them the power to say, yes, as a nation, we can be great. Now, I said one thing here and I will keep on repeating it. It, it may be some of us, because some of us have not participated physically being a member of a political party. I have been. I have done it for 10 years while I was in still in Nigeria, while I was still in high school, from, from my school days, SUG to mass, then to a political party out there. The reason why I did that was because the question was asked. Why are you out there playing the role of, I see it, I see it. Go in there and play the role of, I want to do it. That was what led me into it. And when I saw the congregation of thieves, congregation of those that doesn't love the nation, I see myself all the time speaking something you know, contrary to what all of them are speaking. And I opt out. I want to tell you all here now that the Nigerian politicians, I will repeat it, they will never change. The reason is that when you dive into a pool of water, when you come outside, you'll be wet. But when you see that that pool of water is so cool, and when you come outside the sun, you will still go into that pool of water and still enjoying the the coolness of the pool of water. We have a pool of corruption. When you go into the pool of corruption, for you to come out and say you will never be corrupt again, will be it is going to be God's divine power. And these people are swimming in it. They are dying in it. They don't give a damn about anybody going down. They don't give it. They don't. They no longer love their nation because when you are in, when you are stealing money, you don't love anybody. Even your family, you don't love him. All your focus is the money. So I want to say here that Peter will be with disappointment many of you that are still thinking that, that way. But I say one thing. At the beginning of the election, when we had it, I said, there is nothing bad in merging. But it has to be if you and I have the same ideal focusing. We might come from different angles, but we want one particular thing is keeping us together that we want to see this nation rise to the morning stars so that the world can see it. If that is the case, then there will be no transaction. But the case of Atiku and Obi, there must be and there will be transaction. If Obi comes here to tell me that there's no transaction, he lies. That's the first lie we say. He lies. If there's no contrast, there will be no transaction in what article, the man I know that stole the money of the electricity money that was given and the president came out that if he sees it, if he sees our paraphrase, if he sees a snake, an article will go for the snake. He would like to play with the snake and to play with article. And we are here coming back. We've forgotten it. We always forget it. Black Panther, yes. sorry. Do you, do you have an idea what, um, the, what, what, the, what the transaction will be like? If you know you, if you don't, no problem. The transaction is to give me one portion of the country where the investment is, and let me feed on it, feast on it, so that my partnership with my friends will feast too. He said it now. If I become the president, what's stopping me giving my partners place to feast? So when you see an ideology, an ideology clash, you sit down. We sit down there. We sit down wherever we are. We comfortably say. Oh, there's nothing bad if you merging with article. There's something bad if you merge with article because it's going to be transactional. A lion cannot change his skin. Neither can a leopard change his skin. So what we think Nigeria is, I've said it two, three things. One, we must change the electoral law. We must take out that clause that says INEC has the power to, to say what, where the law goes to. We must take that portion out. If that does not work, we must go on the DEJ Constitutional Conference. If that does not work, we all file out as patriots 
and demand for a new constitution written by we the first constitution that will be africanized written by us but that question of constitutionality when it comes up there are so many people among us that will say that we don't need a constitution that british don't have a constitution tell me what has the british given to the world that's the question. Tell me what has the British given to what America has given to the world democracy and is guiding it with all his heart so that nations will survive. People like us will survive. Therefore, the question goes, what are the British giving to the world? So now let's push that aside because that one is nothing. But now we are talking about Nigeria. If they decide not to give us a new constitution, I as Black Panther, I will stand under the tragedy that the patriots in the military should come and take this country and design it and bring it to a normal a place where that we can do things together. That is it because we all are asking questions. How are we going to go? People are rejecting. How are we going to do it? The last throw, the last throw that will be is for us to invite the military to come in. That is the last throw. The last throw because we don't want any blood to split. Because they are to protect the integrity, to protect the borders, and to make sure that the country does not go down. That is the last straw. And if anybody comes out to, to call to say, oh, Black Panther, why are you something like this? No, 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 let's put that aside. We cannot be talking, talking for long. We need it in the morning. Until the morning go down, then we start shouting. No, we don't want it to lead to where we take up arms and, and bring ourselves down. There is a constitutional body that will not want to see the country down. They can come up, rise up as patriots. The patriotic ones among them rise up, take the country, put it together, and let band all these so-called politicians. They've done it, we've done it before. They've done it before, and they can do it again. So no, no, we, yes, sir. I'm not surprised. I'm not going to be surprised that will be happy very soon. I don't I don't know when it will happen, but let's continue to dialogue. But that is the last straw. So any of us that comes here to say, how can we go about it? That is the last straw. If they can't give us our constitution, if they can't change the, the constitutional give us the constitutional conference, if they can't give us a new electoral law that will curb corruption, that will curb ballot boxing and put a death penalty on ballot boxing, then we have no option but to call the military boys who are patriots to come out and take their country and put it the right course because that is their right. Okay, okay, Black Panther, Black Panther. Um, yes, sir. Because, because we said something about the uh, OB and the uh, OB article, whatever. I just want to throw this in. We've already had it before, we know it. You know, if you are looking for a job, the person who wants to employ you will like to know if you've been doing, if you are, if you are, if you've been doing a job, say, let me get a, ref, a reference, a reference letter from your last employer. Do you understand that? Now, the reference letter from Atiku in his last job was was the one given by Obastanjo in his book. Is Obastanjo said, "If I support Atiku with all the things I know about him, God will punish him." You re that you is, that, that is just it. Look, it's let me tell it. everybody here. We, we all remember start. this. Let's yeah. Continue, continue. Let Let me tell everybody here. In despite the bad thing that he might have done, making trying to sub, you know, make that thing sub and do some kind of amalgamation with the law, blah, 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 to get power. That is his own personal thing. But when Baba came in, OBJ came in, OBJ had a good intention. He had a good intention. OBJ and is it, the best president we have ever had. He had a good intention, and he asked one fundamental question, where is that constitution? And the old Arewa rallied around and gave us a constitution written by an Arewa surrogate. And we are consuming it. That is why I said the driver of this vampire ship that they have created is by the Arewa. And before you ask me question about the Arewa, please go and go and go and be well abreast with your with your history, please. Because you don't you don't ask questions that will make somebody start going haywire. You go and be well abreast with your history because Nigeria, before you go back. You have to go and study your history and make yourself available, you know, well. So I will stand this trajectory. If Peter Obi comes here, 
and say there is an amalgamation that we, they are coming together. If he does not tell us the trans, because there must be a transactional politic in here, because both of them don't have the same ideology. If that be the case, if that be the case, let me land this. You ask. If that be the case, nobody will vote in. Nobody should vote in because Nigeria cannot go on transactional politicking. But Peter B said it one time that. He's ready to whether alliance or cooperate, but let it not be transactional. I think we I think we had that is what I'm saying. If he comes out here and tell me, if he comes out here and tell us that uh, there is no transactional politicking within article, that's a lie, and nobody should vote for our campaign against him. That's a lie because the, that man does not love Nigeria. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Madam okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Blanfata, thank you for your submission. I want to add that uh, I think um, Mr. Obisa is not desperate to become Nigerian's president. So if this is what is, if this happens, if this happened, that is going to merge, which means all those talking were just Google, you know. So let's wait and see what he's going to do. Okay, uh, let me call on. Uh, Mr. Ferrara, again, please give us your. We're going to take the last round of five minutes each. Is that Madam, right? Madam, Madam, uh, Patricia, please uh, uh, hold on, Mr. Ferrara. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, before I will uh, um, respond to Madam Patricia, I would like to appreciate her first for taking over the platform. God bless you, man. I appreciate you always for all you do. Uh, you said, Mr. Peter Obis said he's not desperate to become a president. He said he's, only, he's desperate to see Nigeria work. Anybody that is desperate to see Nigeria work can do anything to see it work. So um, we should also see it from the, uh, the other way as well. So if he's moving from one place to another, it might not be that he's desperate to be a president, but to see the country works. The way we are going right now is not working. And we've given chance to every all of this satanic set of people they are not making it to work, so it's crazy. But meanwhile, before Mr. Ferrara will go ahead, we have Prince Ojagun Olabo on the backstage. You've been there for the past uh, 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Please turn on your camera. I want to know who is that, who is there. Because you are writing on the private chat, on the comment section that you want to contribute. We want to, because it's your first time on the panel, we need to see who is behind that name. If you are listening to me, please do that straight away. Turn on your camera. Let me look at you um, quickly. Okay, let me. Okay, we can see you now. We can see you now. You can turn it off, sir. You can turn it off uh, if you want. Um, okay, thank you very much for joining us. Please tell us where you are joining us from, sir. Okay, I'm in the United Kingdom. All right, I can see you've been on the backstage. The reason why. Madam Pratisha did not let you in, or I didn't let you in because your your name is new, and we need to be sure, you know, um, who is behind that name. Please, I would like you to give your submission first before we come to Mr. Ferrara. Go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you for this opportunity. I've been on this program since the beginning. I just turned on YouTube and uh, I saw the program and I saw the topic. I is it the first time you're coming across across this? This is my this first time. This is my first time. Both oh on YouTube, God. yeah. Oh my God, we need we we need to clap for you here. We need to clap for you. Thank you, I appreciate. It. Thank you. We are pleased to have you on the show. Um, I, guess, I guess you already. I guess you already aware what we are doing here. We are talking about the things that's affecting us in Nigeria. You know, we are telling our government to do the right thing. So I don't know what you are supporting. If you are here to speak, you know, to protect the government or if you are here to speak for the people. Why are you see me being patient on the program? I've been following you up since the beginning of the program. It's because of the conversation. Since I looked at it, it's for the interest of the people. So exactly. I decided to stay. Thank so you, I've just left everything. I was listening to everyone. So it becomes Thank so you, interesting. So Let's that was why I me. decided to. How can, Nigeria, how can how do you think Nigeria can be better in our time, in your time, my time, our time? 
Okay, quickly, I've heard from everyone, but the problem is you and me. Mm. The, the story is who will bear the cat? You are going away, I'm going away. So how do we do it? All of us are running around, who will bear the cat? Have that boldness to do it. Is the problem we are having in Nigeria. The politicians are few people. How many percent are they? Put them together. But they've been able to manipulate you and me. You become the tools to them, which they have succeeded in carrying out every activity they are doing in Nigeria. If you don't give it to them, they won't have this opportunity doing these things they are doing. That is the whole truth. So I am calling every one of us out. I've had our conversation. So I'm calling everyone out. Let us come out and put this thing, hold that cut. If you see the comment I made, I said 27, uh, 27. I'm not seeing, no, we're talking about 2027. I am not seeing any election. I'm giving you one example and I stand to be corrected. I wasn't in power. I was able to find my way in into power by all means, hold Nigeria to a stand. Now I'm in charge. I've been able now building my structures again, all the institution. I'm in charge now. So I wasn't in power. Even the forces in power we are all, all the odds were against me. Yet I find my way into the number one seat. So what do you think 2027? That is the area I'm coming from, you and me. Who is the people carrying out these activities? Who are the coppers? It's the same future we're talking about. Who are they? Who are the peers to the politicians? Who are the secretaries? It's still you to like us, it's still people like us who are carrying out these activities, who are writing all those scripts for them. Today you can see them picking people like uh, Duru to me. They are in the social media and are creating a lot of things. You will see something will come up when there is a, a hike in electricity. Another information will come out on social media. The youth, everyone will be arguing. That one will be carried away. So they are working secretly. You and I who don't understand what is happening. They are building structures around and we allow them to keep doing this thing. The structure is growing. They will punish the poverty and we'll keep speaking. We are not working out to say we want to build the cut. Everyone is running. If we will continue outside like this people, not making this movement a bold step for us to take back our country. We didn't take anything. It's few people that liberate Egypt. It's few people that took this movement. You don't take anything. If you like talk today, it doesn't, they don't even listen to you. You can hear the president said he doesn't listen to social media. Most of them don't give a damn to everything we are saying and all this. But we just need to keep speaking. But I want to encourage us to come out and see how we can build the cut and talk to our conscience. We have brothers and sisters who will help them rig this election. As I'm talking to you, in the INEC, they are fixing it. They are doing it. They have already fixed it against the 2027 we are talking about. They have put people in place. Is it the same National Assembly that will do the electoral reform? No, I don't think so. So you know, so how do we get there? That is where we need to speak to our conscience for the sake of our generation and children unborn. To speak to everyone, if you are an INEC official, if you are a copper who is sent to go and conduct the nation, please do it with your conscience as a Nigeria to liberate this country until we begin to deny money, until we begin to see things and say, yeah, let's look at the future. Nigeria will still remain like this, no matter how we talk. So I call you and I, let us come out and build this cut. It is possible and we can do it. Sorry for taking much of your time. Wow. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, 
Chris, thank you very much for coming in. And um, to be honest, I'm grateful to have someone like you amongst us now. So we look forward to hearing more of your voice. We are here every day, 6 p.m. Nigeria time. We spend about uh, a minimum of three hours to like six hours. Sometimes when the, we have a hot topic, we stay like 12 hours. We are here talking about the things that is affecting everybody. And I am very, very happy that you understand the, 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 the people's plight. You understand where the, the problem is coming from. And the message that you send to the people as well, I'm glad to hear that from you. Thank you very much. Um, like I said before, we are looking forward to having you again on the panel. Anytime you want to join us, uh, look forward to 6 p.m. Nigerian time and come here, speak truth to power. The platform is only known for truth, nothing else but truth. You know, um, everything we talk about here is verified uh, information. You know, anything you're not sure about, just use the word allegedly. Um, we don't pass false information. We call out our government to do the right thing. As you are, I know that since 1960 to date, the same people have been ruling us. They are only been recycling themselves, impoverishing us uh, deeper and deeper and deeper. So um, thank you once again. God bless you, sir. We'll come back to you for your final submission. Uh, we normally have minis that we give to people here. You know, our first submission is eight minis. Uh, final submission, most cases, is four minis. So I think we are already doing that now. So you are also going to have your uh, final submission shortly. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Ferrara, you were about to give your final submission, I guess. So go ahead, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah, thank you all very much. And welcome, Mr. Isi Ujagun Alaba. He seems to have the same name with me. Alab Alabo. Okay. It's, a, it's a, lot a typical German university. German name, okay, yeah. Thank you very much. You made a very wise uh, submission. Please, um, uh, I will use my last uh, final submission to take us a little bit back into small history. This turn-by-turn -turn system of rotation is not working. Nigeria cannot continue like this, but the question is who will build the cats? Blaming who? one another in terms of tribe and religion would not make us to be able to focus on ourselves and see ourselves and our brothers as the problem or part of the problem. Again, I take a small swipe at Mr. Black Panther on that uh, uh, Fulani, our problem uh, position. We, according to Aisha Yusuf, we, if we are hoping or depending on activists, we don't need activists. But what we do need so that this will not continue is that we need our people to, to be active. Active in talking, active in joining parties, active in engaging, active in challenging, active, active, active in whatever they can do within their little small space. That's why I continue to thank Mr. Elvis, Eh? All the other big people who are helping, Rudolph, um, Ayugo, Dele, and all the good people talking. They are doing their God-sent mission, and we have to join them. Now, nothing is going to change in 2027 with this uh, same caliber of people unless the rules of engagement change. It has been like this since the 60s. What do I mean by I want to take us through... Um, uh history listen nigeria has this silent majority that has not been activated yet that are not interested in politics that have moved out of the country that have found their own way of survival that have provided their own electricity provided their own well provide send their own children to school no public school that are doing it on their own but we still need this silent majority to become active in order to remove these satanic people that have put a chokehold on our nation. Now, the problem our nation have, yes, we have tribal and religious, don't get me wrong, but it's small. To me, it's 10%. The 90% problem we have is self-greed. We join up, we know something is bad, and yet we join up with people doing it to do it. Eh? Journalists know he needs to ask tough questions, he never does that. A judge knows that this ruling is wrong. He still gives it because of the, he wants to be a millionaire. A politician, everybody just plays a role, and then we fall back and blame somebody else for our problem. I remember when 
history that I read, though, and I'm quoting the book of Why We Struck at the Mulebu, you know, when the military got involved in politics, it was because some people in the Western Nigeria refused to do the right thing. They decided to form alliance with evil to rig the election, thereby use the military to suppress the West operation where it's here. And then when the military finally got involved, those with radical political ideology, how misguided they might have been, struck. But what happened? The people, the people that stopped them were those who have personal gain. I'm sorry, you uh, people might not like this. The likes of Unrosi, the likes of General uh, Madibu, and the likes of Ojuku, they stopped the likes of Inzeugu and the rest from exercising, even when the coup failed and they reached a compromise. They refused to follow that compromise. And then they, they, they then put these people in jail while they started to run the government. But their government didn't last more than six months before the devils, the devils came and struck them out and they were eaten up by this very system. They failed to fight. That's all. So that one has happened then. And again, we continue to form compromise with evil. We went into the first era of political dispensation a compromise where Awolowo should have won. They gave it to Shagari. Then they now started this 1999 rubbish, rubbish which they call democracy, which has nothing to do with democracy, but what is being practiced is nothing but sacrilege, economic sabotage, disastrous, uh, treasonable felony. People who should be lined up, executed, and shot are the ones we are chapter. Yeah. Well, in conclusion, I would say we need our people need to be active they don't have to be activists just be active in whatever role you have god bless you mr elvis for your platform god continue to bless you <clears throat> all right um thank you very much mr ferrera god bless you sir mr alaba thanks for your submission and thanks for your time with us today as well i'm always happy whenever you join us on the panel i like listening to you thank you sir all right. Uh, I'm not sure who still need to give us submission. I believe Madam Pacha have called all of you already before I came in. Can no, I mean anybody collect to two? No, to two? no we were just starting the second round. So the next person is Mr. Jonathan. All right. Okay. So someone like Black Pata never do final submission. Can no one make collectively no. plate? You know, say no. they collectively plate four plate sometimes. Uh -huh. All right. Now my name, my name is sweet for that your mouth, Nabi. <laughs> Continue. I know the politician. No, <laughs> I say make I check now. Is anything wrong? Is checking whether you don't collect two plates, you know, already. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll Jonathan if you are there. Your final four minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Uh, I greet all the panelists once again, and I welcome uh, Mr. Prince uh, Alobo. Uh, welcome. I, you know, I just want to submit uh, today, finally, that our problem, we've all highlighted them all. And our problem, we can only solve it through the people. It is we, the people, that will solve our problems. It's not the politician. It's not one politician. It's not a group, a group of politicians. No, it is we. In other words, it, our change must be people oriented i alluded to that in my earlier submission it must be people oriented that's why i agree with the speaker uh, the new uh, panelist who was talking about it must be it, it starts from us that's that's what it is it has to be people oriented however we know what we're doing or we know what they are doing both of them we progressives Nigerians that are looking for a good Nigeria. We know what we're doing and we know what they are doing. And that's what they don't want. Because that has been the case. That is the, that is the norm in Nigeria. People don't know what is going on. It is not so today. We know what we're doing and we know what they are doing. Because if I want to ask, what is it that we don't know? Is it the hijack of the judiciary that we don't know, that they have hijacked the entire judicial system? Is it that that we don't know of? Where do you want to start from? Is it the complete destruction of institution 
and the capture, the complete capture and destruction of institutions and agencies? Is it that that we don't know of? Which one? Is it the collapse of the economy through unworkable, unworkable economic policies? Is it that one that we don't know of? Is it the massive institutional corruption? Is it that that we don't know of? We can go on and on and on. We know it all. We know what is happening. And we know how they have destroyed Nigeria to, to this point. We know how we get. We know. What we can, what we must do for us all is that going forward, we the people must come together. The, the change that we're looking for us to be people oriented. That is it. We must come together to undo it effectively. That is how to undo them effectively. It has to be people oriented. I agree with that. It is we the people. We must know where we are faulty, where we are fall short, starting from even those that are that sees themselves as nothing in Nigeria. Talk of the, the, the speaker talk, the speaker talk about the even those uh, uh, university uh, undergraduate or newly grad uh, newly graduates uh, that will go uh, what they call the, the core members that will go and and uh, and so pretend over elections at small small you know local polling units. They play a significant role. It starts from there. Every one of us. Our change must be people oriented. We cannot, we cannot outsource it to the likes of Atiku Abubakar. We cannot outsource our, our destiny, the change that we are looking for, and outsource it to the likes of Atiku Abubakar and Co. It cannot be. It has to be people oriented. I will leave it at that, Mr. Elvis, uh, for today. I really appreciate it. I want to thank all the panelists once again. Thank you very much. All right, uh, Mr. Jonathan, God bless you, sir. Thanks for your submission, your final submission right there. Okay, let's hear from the next person quickly um, so that we can move on. Oga Prince, let me take it the way it is on the table. Oga Prince Collins, thank you, sir, for your time with us. Please, yeah. just four minutes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for being, for being there always, you know. Uh, our panelists, they've all spoken well, and uh, just for me to add a little to what uh, we've all said, you know, it's just to emphasize on uh, people oriented, the people must rise up, the two last speakers, you know. You see, in as much as uh, I agree with uh, the two last speakers, uh, especially the, a new speaker, which I want to appreciate him for his uh, eloquency. It is very important that the people should know what to do. It's, it is very important that we should know that the impediment in Nigeria is the execution of the judicial system or the rights of the people. You know, when people are not punished, I agree with you that uh, everybody must rise up. We must be. We must do the right thing. We must try to, you know, make sure that we are in the right track. We must ignore corruption. We must uh, uh, do away with uh, uh, things that will, you know, draw us back. Okay, fine. Those things are fine. But majority of humans are wired to be self-centered. We are wired to be self-centered. We cannot do it except there is an external force is comparing us to do such thing. And when we know that if we don't do the right thing, there is consequence for it, we must always follow the right track because we are afraid to be punished. That is where punishment and reward comes in when it comes to execution of government policies. When people are not punished or celebrated for bad or good behavior, when people are not celebrated for morality or punished for immorality, we will never get it right. Never. That is why we see that societies that have succeeded has always 
make sure that everybody is by the rules. The rule of law must prevail. Nigeria can never get it right except we follow the rules. And how can we survive this? We have to create a system that works. And it is only the judiciary that have that power to make sure that those systems work by giving to Peter what he deserves and Paul what he deserves at any point in time. And the judiciary cannot achieve this purpose just in a clear eye. It is the people, that's where the people come in. Electorate must rise up against injustice, must rise up against polarization, and must rise us, rise up against sentimental divides. Any society that is enjoying the rule of law today, their forefathers stood up and rose against oppression and injustice, shed their blood, died for it, and pay the price for their incoming generation to live peacefully. We cannot have peace when we didn't when we didn't plan for it. Magic cannot happen from anywhere. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violent but by violent take it by force. If it was a magic, God would have ordered the children of Israel to pack their load and start at the center of Goshen and he would disappear all of them into the the land of the promised land, but he's, he asked Moses to take over that matter of leadership to lead them there. Nigeria must rise up at any point in time if we want change, and we must compare the people in, a, in the realm of affairs to do the right thing. And until we do this, there is no way. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Nigeria. I want to appreciate everyone for today. It's a, it's a big time. A great time having you all listening to you. I learn from everyone, and we should, we should we shall continue to, you know, pray that we have this strength to do what we are doing. I appreciate everyone. God bless you. All right. Thank you very much, Prince Collins. God bless you, sir. Thanks for your submission and your time, your dedication. We appreciate you. Okay, uh, Mr. Odua, you are the next on the list. Please you give us your final submission for me, sir. Okay, Margaret never talk who. Well, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Hey, this oriented, gazetted, and peripheral. Me, I don't understand who, because me, now inside market, I for come at. Then, how will we, when they say good, they understand with you now they talk now? Nah. Ah, well, anyway, thank you all. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> Mr. Adua. Yes. Mr. Adua, are you funny? Where did you, where did you see my <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria, wait till we do talk. <laughs> now, me, I know. I beg, when I never hungry, this show, Tinubu is trying. So, by the time when I hungry, when I know, when I will need to fight for myself. So, for me, Tinubu, I beg, do them well, well, make them no say, uh, not be spirit, they make any country better. Not be say, put on hope of God, now they make country better. Oh, uh, may they go the seven months, go the pray ten, seven, uh, pray inside months, five times again, seven months, or uh, even for street. Not be they make country better. So according to the Bible, say that after the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. So when Nigeria is suffering the Nigerians, then they have to take it by force. So Nigeria will now take the country by force. Uh -huh. So by taking your country by force, all of them need to come out for street. All of them know the right to do. You need to know that this is the time to plant come. You go plant come. This is the time to plant cassava. You plant cassava. You need not to decide your community finish. Say in the name of development at the end of the day. You say no get where to farm again. So these are things that you need to do. You need to know about yourself. Not be school the teacher. Now wisdom and common sense. So that is it. So anybody when they position, even when even lecture herself, when you know say they're supposed to teach people, but before he pass and say, come inside my office. Better than the office there for the right the exam. So all the Gideas, they are wicked. No one change in our mind. No one change from that to a bad character. No one start to do good things so that your country go better. So now only that when I get to advise all of us, so both we went the set pepper, both we went the shot along, along, ring road, ring road. So all of us need to come out for the street and make our country better. Thank you. 
good night to all of us. Thank you. All, all right, uh, Mr. Odua. Yes, um, even though your submission um, has some kind of uh, comedy on it, but you are saying the facts. You're saying the fact I agree with you. If we are, if we continue to be praying that Nigeria will be better, we'll wait like this forever. That's just the fact. Thank you, sir. Uh, Augustine, your turn, sir. Your four minutes. Then I come to Black Panther. Mister, Mister Elvis, please. What is your What is your pants today now? Because we they talk about this thing, so you know, sometimes. What is your pants today? I it can be check. every. It can. It can be anything. Just. <laughs> it can. Never, it can be. Man, your, man, your check come as you know. Say. <laughs> as they work, that's what they're talking for here. Now you're talking now. Uh, today, one naira. I don't mm -hmm. reduce. It's getting better. It's now one thousand eight hundred and forty. You say one naira. Uh, one, one pound. Naira. One pound. One thousand eight hundred and forty. It's getting better again. Tinubu is working. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Like <laughs> Two days ago, now it get better. Yeah, two so days ago it was, it was, it was almost the game, uh, it. yesterday. Don't start to they go up. Yeah. Okay, was, you know what funny thing? You know what funny thing? Last last two weeks, I mean last three weeks, I got I got to watch um uh uh, uh this uh, uh channel uh, uh, no TVC Gide Gide called a show. Uh, uh, this guy, uh, uh, this pastor from uh, do not, uh, Suleiman, Suleiman, you yes. know, Suleiman said, uh, dollar, dollar, four, and nobody's saying anything. No, my you know that GD and his and his crew in a uh, uh, journalist hangar brought this, brought this Suleiman, emphasized it that dollar is really falling. He was even making the report to understand that even the central bank, uh, uh, number one man does not know how, um, does not know the value of dollar the next day. So he was trying to tell them that the system is working. that they are fixing it but now that the team right. rose up i was expecting him to say okay this thing is rising what this what is going on he's been so quiet and so shameful because that's that that's that tv now tv is agbados tv no but the problem not really agbados tv this is why people don't take men of god serious when the exactly. team was rising Suleiman was accusing everybody if he had the spirit of god he would have known that that was just um a makeshift even Mr. Jonathan here told everybody uh, repeatedly that this is just like a camouflage. It's going to fall again. Of but course. But okay. man that's supposed to be leading a congregation. All right. And he was accusing all, right. all Nigerians. Well, my concern is say four days ago or three days ago, it was 2,000. Today is 1,8. So you don't go clap for Tenubo for that one. No, you no, don't need to go up up. again since yesterday. It's already going up again. It fell two days ago, but now it's going up again. So yeah. even the yeah. even the United even the United Kingdom and the United States, which is Papa and Pekin, that are managing the world economy, they have something to show in the global market. So what do we have in Nigeria that we are competing in the global market? Can you imagine Let's that? assume yeah. these people manage, they manage the finances of the world, but they still yeah. have things they compete in the global market to show. That's part of the politicking in it. They still have something in the market to show. So yeah. you, as a, somebody who only depend, import dependent, everything will take, we import them. So Jerry, we are just wasting money, the Nigeria money. No matter how you pump in money, please go to the bureau, the change and be giving them dollar. Those people will just collect it and keep and pretend. Tomorrow they are making profit. Those few days he packed last month he packed dollars and went CBN went and give them and appreciating them. They packed it and reduced it, begin to sell it one thousand one. Kept the huge one behind. They are selling it out now. Who is making the profit? Anyway, anyway, let me give my final submission. Regarding, let me take off from this issue of dollars. So, you know, the way dollar is now, anybody can supply fake dollar, and nobody knows that. So you can still put fake dollar into the circulation on a dollar, but that is by the way. So, um, regarding a uh, article, the topic of today, what article did was to fly a kite. If I do, if. I want a big kite, but that kite will not fly. The thing is, that Tiku is running out of time. Look at his age. 
he's been contesting for years. So he's caught up in his own web. The trick he played on Jonathan is haunting him now. Probably if he had allowed Jonathan finish his second term in 2015, what that means by 2019, automatically it should be the power will move up north. And with every um, support, Atiku will just clinch it. But rather than Atiku to cooperate with Jonathan and PDP, this same PDP, they all left for APC. They did the uh, antipathy, Atiku Saraki, and uh, Sule Lamido, um, uh, Muaz Babangeda Aliu, Kwakwansu, all of them. They said it is the turn of the north. Not because Atiku wanted to stand for it, because Atiku wasn't on the ballot, but Buhari was against Jonathan. He supported the Fulani opposite to make sure that he deprived his party nomination, which is what we also did. That's why they are finding, somebody was telling me, that's why they are finding it difficult to sanction Wike easily, because Wike did what Atiku did in 20, 2023, what Atiku did in 2015. So Atiku is being, his karma is caught catching up with him. Peter B won't fall for his bet. I give Peter B if he's listening to this option. Stay Labour Party, reform it. The followership is there for you up and down the country. In fact, you are gaining more followership with this your ball who you are doing, and then the same party people are now showing towards you. And again, the economy is getting worse. Because if the man there knows exactly what he's doing, people will be thinking less of you because their condition of condition of living with standard of living will be increasing and then the cost of living will be decreasing. So people will now be talking, oh, Tinubu is really with the answer. Let's forget about forgery. But things are not going. Therefore, everybody will be looking in your own direction. So do not go to Atiku again. That's one. If you must leave Labour Party, form a new party. Because you now have a fellow, you've tested yourself, and then the country accepted you, even internationally. So I do not see why somebody should have an empire and be negotiating for a province. You can't have a continent and be, say you want one country. But you have the continent. So that is the, that is what I would advise people to be. The issue of Atiku, although you promise us also, I will take you by your word, you, you are desperate, Nigeria should be good, but it can combine with anybody, but it can never be transactional. So that word, I hold you to it. It is the word you used. You don't want anything transactional. Whereby quid pro quo, give me this oil, well, give me this, I trade in this. No. In terms of voter strength, you now have it. You can compete. In fact, people are becoming good politicians as a result of you. I know that your in a do election, mentioning P2B can never be a minus to anybody who mentions it. That is one thing. That is an asset. Then the people are looking in direction of Abia as if to say, now you there in charge, but because of Labour Party. So why should you go to Atiku? Everybody is leaving PDP. So that is my advice for P2B, and it should be very, very clear. So Niger Watch, the last word to you. Thank you very much for the opportunity, like we always say here, this is our, this is where we can, we can make it to channels, arise, TVC, never, AIT or NTF, error. So we can come here freely without let or hindrance. Thank you very much and good night, everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, August. Um, thanks for your submission. Uh, that message to Mr. Peter will be, I wish she go reach the hand, though. I've been reach. <laughs> yes, for example, reach the hand. Or oh, I'll cut that part, man, and put that for a WhatsApp. Because normally, um, I felt all this thing three days ago. Say, make we pray, make we not use our heart. It's poor with it without you, though. Uh -huh. You know, those of you that is encouraging, Peter will be, no matter, no matter, no matter. Uh, remember that we are talking about Nigerians here. You can't control the people's minds. You can't. Uh -huh. A lot of Nigerians are very, very angry with APC and PDP. A lot of Nigerians, majority of Nigerians are happy with these two. They are angry with these two parties. So I'll leave it like that. Let me call on the next person to speak to us, Black Panther, then come to Oga Chris before uh, we move to the final person, which is Prince Alab. Uh, Black Panther, you have four minutes on your final submission. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nigel, thank you for giving me another time to speak. I want to stand on my former protocol. And I want to say right here, Nigeria Wash, you are doing an awesome 
project. See, I can't go to another platform. What I do is just to listen to them now. Because the reason why is like this. If you have a platform that has the same idea where you can speak out your belief and you have a congregation of patriots that believe in that what you're speaking, we might be coming from different dimensions, di different directions, but we are focusing on one, we are going to get to one end point. I must thank you, you are, you are having a great project on hand and we will continue to back you up in this project until we see it materialize and we we, 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 we we put the flag of victory up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, you. the reason why I say that is that I, I monitor a lot of channels, and if I enter that channel, I'm going to break it with my word. That is why I just keep calm and be watching it, because there are some places you go to, if you are not very strong, you just like the Bible says, if you don't, if you cannot eat, if you, if you, if you grow, if your, if your faith is small as a mustard seed and you go to towards some people that have better faith you begin to look at them as if they are mad it's the same thing if you go into if you see some of them that and that are still down you see them speaking you know that there's something wrong with their mindset they've not seen the picture yet what they are seeing is just from a selfish perspective and they believe that oh the mindset of the politician you can just speak and abracadabra it change that is what they don't know. That is why I, I just want to thank Mr. Ferreira, you know, you know, that came here because I know him very well. I know how tough he is. I don't know how he debates. But I want to say something to Mr. Ferreira. Mr. Ferreira, the problem of Nigeria. I'm here. I'm here. Yes. The problem of Nigeria is historical. And like I said the other time, I'm not here to speak about one Nigeria because you don't have one Nigeria. I'm not here to make a speech about one Nigeria. No, we don't have one Nigeria. We are here to form a country. And why we are here is because we want, the, we want to form another amalgamation. And we are giving it is optional. That is it. We don't have, it's optional. If they can't do it, then let's go for another constitution. Like what I said, according to what I, I laid down. That is how it's supposed to be. We have to have something we are fighting for. And we have to lay down the options. The options we have must be on the ground. I don't believe in uh, uh, one Nigeria. There's no one Nigeria because you can see it. It's pictorial. You can see it. It's physical. You can see it. We need to speak truth so that people will learn because people are out there that don't have information. We need to speak truth. The problem is not everybody. We know the problem. You can divide, you can divide the problem into two forms. You can speak on one, speak on one. Then people will know where they fall in. Nigerians have suffered a lot. We have suffered. We've been there. We have suffered. Some of us went out because we had the opportunity to go out to, to study and know more about things so that we can give back to the country itself. But now what they are doing, it is going to change, my brother. It is going to change. Sudan was on this same path. Oil was the problem. One particular tribe was ruling. What happened? It led to a division. It is very simple. Let them continue. I said it's going to get bad and bad and bad. But when the rain comes, the rain will come in a formation whereby the rain will suck a lot of things. And all of us will see it in our Kuro Kuro eye. We will all ask for what? Let us go our pathway if they refuse to do it. So one thing I will say to Nigerians, let us keep the fire burning. Let us keep the pressure on. We are not one Nigeria, but we are about to be. Let us keep learning let us keep educating let us keep talking and when the time comes it will come the water is still boiling and it will boil those that those that are around trying to form again we'll put them into that boiling water and we will we'll see them no more thank you mr niger and god bless you all right uh black panther god bless you my brother i appreciate you thanks for the prayers thanks for the encouragement and thanks for your submission i appreciate you um Boga Chris. Please, you have the floor. Your four minutes. Yeah, well, um, Mr. Njaro, thank you very much for the opportunity again and to contribute. Um, well, um, I just want to thank uh, the new person that joined us today, Prince Ujagun Alaba. Is that the um, importance 
of sharing um, this broadcast because if you do, um, YouTube have the, uh, it, the YouTube has a way of suggesting these videos to people on YouTube, people that don't know about this channel at all. But if YouTube see the kind of things you search for on the internet, you know, they can now suggest videos like this to you. And this can only happen when we share any of these broadcasts. So people, let's keep sharing. So my own is that, um, yeah, well, you see, um, it's difficult for me to blame the people in the sense that I still see that the major problem we face in Nigeria, why Nigeria is not really moving forward, is because of the diversity. We are too diverse. We are not one. And we need to understand that, that we are not one. That is why you see when there is protest in one part of the country, the other part, they will just look the other way. Imagine all the atrocities during Buhari's time, but people just kept quiet. People in his region, they just kept quiet, majority of the people. The same thing is also almost taking shape in the West now. You see, a lot of people that would have ordinarily spoken up, but they are all keeping quiet, especially those that spoke against the evil in Jonathan's administration. But they all kept quiet. What was the reason for that? It is because of that division that we all are uh, trying to cover, to use political terms and switch words to cover. So that's just why I think that the people should not be blamed. And moreover, uh, Peter Obi made a very, very instructive statement uh, yesterday or two days ago when he said, the biggest problem, you mark that word, the biggest, that's an adjective that shows that there are other problems, but the biggest one of them is the judiciary. Like the newcomers uh, clearly explained, imagine all of us, we are all involved somehow the INEC, the people conducting the election, everybody, people are the polling units, you and I, our brothers and sisters, everybody manipulating the system. But imagine if we have all done that and our whatever we have done gets to the table of the judiciary, which is supposed to be the final buster, and the judiciary is still able to stand and do the proper thing. All the things, all the atrocities that every one of us committed Will, will not count any longer. So that is why I saluted Mr. Uh, Peter Obi for saying that the biggest problem is the judiciary because any society where people don't get the repercussion of crime, crime is going to continue in such societies. And again, how come, how can we really blame the people? Imagine the people that lost their lives in the last election, the people that had bodily injuries, people lost properties, people are still losing properties today because of the action they took. People lost their businesses because of the action, their quest to make Nigeria work. Now they've lost all those things and the election has come, their wishes were not met. And today, nothing has happened to the people. The people that, you know, that caused all those mayhem on these Nigerians. So it is very clear that when the next election is come, people are going to advise their words, their families, you have to stay at home. Because if anything happens to you, nobody is going to be held accountable. So it is years and years of negligence like this that has made the people to be completely dumb. So that the country, everybody is, everything is just not like a jungle. Everybody wants to survive first. Because if you fight, at the end of the day, you can't get justice. Just like I said, imagine the lives that we ruined during the last election. Did they get justice? No. Tinubu just continue ruling. Those were the things they lose their life for. And the judiciary, nobody, they, they, no, do, none of those people could get judgment against the people that maltreated them. Look at the people that are still losing businesses, properties, appointments, everything to the day. There's no justice system to help these people mitigate against whatever action they will pull against the Nigerian state. And moreover, we must not always forget this tribal ethnic and religious dichotomy that has uh, infiltrated the very fabrics of the society. So it's me, I think it is um, a way of uh, just trying to, uh, it's a coping mechanism for we to think, for we to believe that the people should be blamed. The people have tried, just look at that at the last election. They collected their PVCs, they were denied everything that INEC did. Even when it was raining, they tried, they did all they could. But yet, they didn't get their result. Yet, one man woke up at the middle of the night and declared a result that was unfounded on nothing. 
So what the judiciary ought to have done, they ought to have corrected that ill. Because in a society, if you know that whatever happens, there's the judiciary there. I'll just round up in 10 seconds. There's the judiciary there that will ensure justice and fair play for everybody. Then people will be motivated to give up their life to save their nation. And thank you very much. And once again, welcome, Mr. and Prince Ujagun. It's really nice to have you. Thank you, Mr. Nanjawash, for the opportunity to contribute. All right, uh, Oga Chris, thank you, sir. God bless you. That was a good analysis. Uh, but that, that, that your submission, not be waiting that they give for final submission now. Eh? If you give us this, but that, that's a lot to learn from the situation that we are facing in our country right now. But unfortunately, these guys listening to us, they are not putting it in practice. That's the painful part of it. They are not interested. This same satanic set of people travel to abroad. They see how developed this country are, but they have never tried to replicate or emulate the same thing. Na, na, Wash. Yes, sir. I want to ask put this question forward. Satan the Satan the group for forgiveness. For well, we are I said you force on Peter. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. I'd like to call on uh, Priest Alago. Thank you very much, sir, once again for joining us today. You have four minutes for your final submission. We have Honorable Sam joining us. Uh, you know, so going to get this in four minutes. Go ahead, sir, Mr. Priest. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Niger. Which has been a wonderful moment with everyone. Uh, it's quite unfortunate that these people, the only people that listen to you is the DSS. The main politicians don't listen. So people you see listening to what we are doing now is those people to see so that they will send you issue threat or start to go after you. But in other places in the Western world, the institution, they work for the betterment of the people. They take information from people and put it and see how they can fix the problem. You talked about the judiciary. When I talked about the how politicians they build their structures, those are things we don't look into. These people, they took time. Most of them are on their payrolls, as alleged. Who nominate them? Who appoint them? Can your children go and apply for a job in an NPC and pass? So those are the structure they keep building. They will bring their children over here and just send them direct. So to take over these institutions. So when I nominate you, in a place can you stand up to work against me those are things it takes people who have the power to say here yeah, i want to follow my conscience even if you are the one that gave me this opportunity but no i love my country and i want to put the people first but you find that one difficult because of how the system is operating before you are even coming out here to talk they have started planning their own six years ten years ago putting people in position to achieve their 10 years to come dreams. Those are how they work. So that is why I'm encouraging everyone, even if they give you that opportunity, you are an annex chairman, you are a youth copper, whichever place you find yourself, you are a secretary to these evil people that do not have the interest of the citizens, the interest of the country at heart. See how you can expose them. Find people you trust, disclose some vital information, bring out the document, disgrace them publicly. This is how we can sanitize the system. But if you had that opportunity and you go in and you begin to behave like them, you take the money. We can because this thing, this system is already gone. The only way for us to come out of it is people who are their structure are the people who is going to help us all. And there are people like you and me. There are some of us in our broad here. It's the same people that sponsored us out. It's the same people that are building those structures, sending one way or the other, pumping their money in doing those things. They bring them back. There are people they send in the media. There are people they send in different stories. In different ways, that is how everyone, all the politicians, they have those their structure they think they have. One thing I want to raise concern about which I want to talk, I've been using my platform, is my state that have suffered a lot 
since 1999, 2007, River State have gone through a lot. Odile wanted to be a president. River's resources gone through money exchange hands. Today, EFCC is raising concern of how many 100 billion is on the list among those people. His name is mentioned. In 2015, this part two came out. The outgoing governor then becomes a demigod. Most governors in APC then came out on public TVs and said, you personally sponsored me. You made me to win. Whose money did they use? River State resources. The same thing, 2023, reverse resources went through, yet it couldn't succeed. And none of them is learning anything. And they will go to the north, they will collect those money, they will go here and do, they will take all this money from them. Reverse people are the ones suffering. So, and you see them after doing all these things, they feel they have the power, they have the resources with the people money, the people resources, and they don't have any conscience. So those are the kind of people we need to stand to see how we can work and let them know. People who are walking around them need to let them know and see how they can expose them more. So we can recover these resources. We need these things. They travel abroad. They come over here. It is we resources I have in my state, rivers the where I come from. When I come here, I should come and rest, not to come because my state couldn't give me what I need or my country. So it's really frustrating. And when we think about this, some of us are really frustrated. It's, 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 that is, if I'm trying to express, I'm expressing this with tears because I know where I come from. In my place after an Ijoma, where I come from, I came from an oil. So when you see some of us speaking, we are speaking in tears because what we have, we are not supposed, if we come here, we should come for tourists, come for anything and just go back. Not because our system is not working. So we need to come out, like I said earlier, who will bear the cat? It's you and me. Who is working for them? It's your younger brother and my younger sister. Who is working for them? It's one of us here who are also talking. A lot of people, they will come and give us little money. You sold your conscience. So these are things we need to begin to see how we can start this movement. The movement I'm saying now is not by violence, it's not by fighting, it's not by taking harms. No. When you speak, you take into action. For people who are Christian who believe they say faith without work is what is dead. So we need to come as we are speaking. We need to begin to make the movement. We need to begin to push. Because these people who are in power today, for you to take power from them, it is not easy. So thank you, everyone. I encourage every one of us to step out from everywhere we are and take this bold step and see how we can change these cuts. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you, um, Oga Prince. I appreciate your time and submission with us. Like I said before, we are looking forward to having your voice here again. And let's do it together collectively to see how we can achieve this new Nigeria in our time. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, the last person on the panel is Honorable Sam. Uh, sir, it's good to have you on the show. Uh, please, you're also gonna have your four minutes. Unfortunately, you're just coming in just four yeah, minutes. Yeah, not the here, I didn't have my system. He said it was August CM, he said what? I said, I didn't, I didn't hear. I thought he said uh, Sam to speak, Honorable Sam. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, uh, he's here. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Nigeria Wash. Uh, my distinguished panelists. Uh, once again, I'm so pleased to be in your midst. Though I've been uh, away for some time due to some uh, different activities, you are aware uh, what's happening in my state. I'm involved. Sometimes before I come home, I'm somehow exhausted and I need to rest against uh, the activities of the next day. So, coupled with some uh, my church activities, I've not been able to really hook up with what is happening. I want to appreciate you all for what you've been doing. I haven't said that. I, I remember the last time I 
the last uh, time I was on air, uh, I did make a statement, uh, which uh, I actually said that uh, my candidate, uh, uh, my candidate as uh, his law firm is one of the best in the world. You know, I was challenged, and I was glad that some some persons brought out some facts. You know, best known to them. You know, I on my own, I because I heard it somewhere. I tried to find out how authentic that statement is. Although I've not really gone so deep in it because I've been grossly uh, occupied with some other activities. But all I got to know later is that, uh, yes, uh, his firm and one other firm were rated as in project finance. They were selected in Africa. You know, uh, although I've not been able to lay on, on the document. So until that is done, I want to withdraw that statement for now. But uh, this firm is on the issue of Nigeria is still one of the top three in Nigeria and one of the best in Africa. So I won't say that uh, I listen clearly to what has been what has been said today concerning the statement made by the former vice president of the country, Atiku Abubakar. Uh, to me, uh, yes, people may look at it that uh, why PDP or why other party. I've said it. This country, the way it is now. When uh, the current president was not the president, he told us pop and play that it, it is his time. We thought he was joking. We thought uh, the everything on ground, we thought there's no way he can be president. Nigerians have rejected him. Along the line, like what somebody just said, they planned it before now. They already have their plan. Yes, plan that is going to be the next president. And it came before our very I became the president. You know, they already planning for 2027. How it's going to be. You know, to me, if that statement is true and the PDP actually zoned presidency to the east and somebody like LB is called upon to pick up that ticket, to me, I will use everything about me to support him. Not because I'm a PDP man. I've always said it's not all about political party. If OB was in DDD, what makes Labour Party, Labour Party today's Peter B, OB, OB? It was not Peter OB that made, uh, it was not the Labour Party that made Peter OB. Peter OB made Labour Party because of his integrity, his name, and what he has done over the years. You know, people still want somebody. Nigeria will still want somebody who can still come out there, irrespective of the political party, somebody that is known, that can really stand and say, we want to uh, we want to fix this country. That's what uh, Obi has said. You know, look at the statement. I think, I don't know who made that statement, that Obi said, I'm desperate in fixing Nigeria. Yes, we must have that person that who is desperate. Who has that desperation, irrespective of political party, to fix the to feed Nigeria as a country? I keep saying it: political party, irrespective of the name, is called is the individual that matters. What is the dream of these individuals? That's what matters. You know, uh, I, I was I was going through the article uh, uh, posted in the platform by by Mrs. Uh, I think she Swiberry, so as Mrs. Suda, Susan. He said he said in tw in two thousand and six, the EFCC chairman Neil Rubado Asaden came before the Senate, and listed five, com uh, five uh, corrupt governors. Said they include Ojikalu of Abia State, Ahmed Tinubu of Lagos State, uh, Ahmed Sani uh, Yarima of Zamfara State, Josh Akume of Benue State, Chimaroke Onamani of Enugu State. Today, in 2024, 18 years later, he said Ojikalu, who is he now? He's a senator in the Federal Republic. Bola Ahmed Tinubu was listed as one of the corrupt men. 18 years ago, today is the president of the country. Ahmed Sani Yarima is a senator. George Akume, a senator now appointed as the SGF in the, in the, of, of, of the federation. Shimaruki is now also a senator. Then the EFCC man, Neil Rubado, who made all these lists, but failed to prosecute them, is now appointed by Tinubu to be the national security advisor. You know, the Senate, the Senate is currently headed by another EFCC regulars, Senator Gordon Akpabio. That will tell you the nation we are, a Nigerian nation. People were listed to be criminals when they were governors. They were paraded before the Senate. But today they are topping the list. They are the one governing us. Out of those five, one of them is the president of the Federal Republic. Out of those five, one of them is the secretary to the, uh, uh, to the Federation of, uh, of, of, of the country. Out of those five, three of them are six senators. What are we talking about? Now, somebody said, yeah, he may say it in a very, uh, in a, uh, sorry, anyhow, he may have said it. Now, in Nigeria, if something is not done well, there will be cool data in Nigeria. 
are we really uh, advocating for it? No, we, we need democracy. You understand? Because people will always say the worst military is, uh, I mean, the worst civilian is better than uh, the, the best military. But the way Nigeria is now, sometimes it's like I don't really believe that statement anymore. I don't believe it. Because if you look at what is happening in some other African countries, look at what is happening in some other countries. Look at Niger. I mean, look at when uh, the, 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 the overthrow. Look at the country. It's bouncing back. Look at Burkina Faso. Look at what the president just did. He's a, a military president. What did he do in of recent? He reduced the, the, the ministers. The politician salary reduced them with 30% and increased the worker salary with 50%. Yeah, that's a military man. What are we talking about? In Nigeria today, except because we're talking about constitutional review, who is to review the constitution? Is it not? Is it the Red Chamber or the Green Chambers? They review the constitution against themselves? You understand? That's the question I keep asking myself. Will they do it? We're talking about constitutional conference. Will they allow constitutional conference? This thing that we call Nigeria has expired. It expired to 2014. I keep saying it. Amalgamation, there was one, there was an agreement that Niger this entity they call Nigeria should last for 100 years. After that 100 years, they should sit down, Nigerians should sit down and have a review. Don't want this, that is done. Nigeria is not really existing as a country. We are not, what, what type of system of government are we practicing? Is it co-federal system? Is it federal system? No. We call it Federal Republic of Nigeria. We really practice federalism. Anything built on what is wrong, everything about it will be wrong. That is why we are seeing what we are seeing in Nigeria. Nigeria as a country, well, yes, we say we love Nigeria. Yes, we love Nigeria. Are we really one? With the way things are done in Nigeria, are we really one? We are not. We must settle ourselves with that. We are not one as a country. You understand? So that's the main reason. If, if you look at when Jagaban was trying to get power, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Buhari was trying to get power, he came to team up with Jagaban in the West to take power from the then PDP. You understand? So, to me, I still believe that alliance must be done. Uh, Peter B cannot do it all alone. That's just the truth. Sometimes you need uh, some of these people. You need them to, 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 as far as what you have a good dream, you have a good dream for the country. So, to me, uh, sincerely, for Nigeria to move forward, I don't, not that I'm praying for a revolution, I'm seeing the revolution happening in Nigeria. And most often it will start in the West. Let's mark this statement. It will start in the West with the way the hunger, the pain and hunger among Nigeria now will push them to the war and they will begin to fight by themselves. I said, I say a time will come, Nigeria will fight for itself. When I say Nigeria, Nigeria as an entity will fight for itself and true Nigerians. Thank you very much. God bless us all. Sorry. All right. Niger watch. Niger watch. Well Can spoken. We well spoken. Well spoken. It's good. Niger watch, please. Ten seconds. You see, honorable, what you said, uh, 1914 was amalgamation. 100 years it will expire. Yes, Jonathan knew. That's why he organized that conference in which Professor Zekome told us that more than 1,000 items they agreed consensually that this is what should be done. To the extent that to any two states or local government, if they like, they can merge and become one. It doesn't require federal intent. So there are a lot of far-reaching decisions that Buhari scuttled it by not putting it into uh, operation. So Nigeria really know that it has expired, but they renegotiated a new Nigeria, which, which was what Jonathan did in 2014. Just to put that in. Thank okay. you. And Nigeria, I beg, 10 seconds, I beg. Nigeria, Nigeria, 10 seconds. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, Honorable Sam, I think uh, I just salute you for... And um, whatever you have said, um, it's quiet um, and enriching and nourishing. I think if we all can keep politics aside for once, you know, and just pick like this for Nigeria, I think we'll, it will go a long way. There are a lot of people in your PDP that would never believe that will be actually won the election. But you spoke now, not as a politician, but a true Nigerian. And for that, you must be commented. It's not every time attack, attack, attack. You spoke really well. Thank you very much. Thank you. I Thank you. Naja Watch. Naja Watch. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, thank you, Uncle Sam. You see, you know why I say I love you. This is this is the Uncle Sam I know. You see where you position you stand now. I love it. And you spoken the outright truth. You gave gave us historical antecedent. You brought us back and aligning with what is happening now. May God bless you. That is why I like you. 
You know they speak through before. Which one is Black Panther? They said. You know, 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 you Thank you. Keep it like this. Thank you. Only, only today you speak truth. Now, so black fans are going to refer in future. Now, you go say, you don't see that the way you speak truth. No, black fans, what do you do, Agassi? Why Agassi will fire you like this? Now, let me protect you for this panel. Now, just watch. Now, just watch. See, let me tell you one thing. Now, see, when I speak, I speak the truth. I beg you. Even sometimes when me I they do I they bully you, you can say I they bully you, but okay. you know okay. what they make you the bully you now because of the passion. You made the bully all of us from here. They say I know the not you know to use you know to use bully. Say I the I know the I don't say the bully oh. Yeah. We there ten you. here. Tell us who know they speak. I beg ten seconds. Ten seconds. Tell us who know they speak truth here. Who know they speak? I beg you now. Bring oh Okula Okula cement. We need to win that. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. I beg. Okay, uh -huh. And those state and those state people, anybody when want to become governor, I beg. When I go bring up Bilas make party for us, uh -huh. who are not there here or tomorrow, the oh, governorship when they come, when I help me answer this question. Thank you. Or do a one build house, or do a one build house. Man, man, All right. watch. I beg. I want to appeal for everyone. I hear on the speaker against him. Uh, my our governor we not support them we know the process that brought them in was the wrong foundation but god has a way of working he can use anybody as it is now at least river state are benefiting a little so more can i forgive her any foundation will carry them come at least the foundation is fighting against himself at the benefit of our, our people who, who will they forgive who will they forgive I know some people raise concerns. They give out the taker. Yeah. Fubara, Fubara, Fubara. Which, yes, made them for oh, the Fubara. The taker. Hey, and you know, when people are fighting against themselves, the people will be benefiting. I bet they continue the fight. Reverse people are benefiting. Oga priest, Alabo, you know, say this is our panel. So, eh? Uh, get the way everybody take day. Eh? Uh, so, in my mind, the terminal say, Fubara, say me come quick rescue and for inside the panel now. Na na trouble they find now. Na Fubara, Fubara, say me. I know, I know be supporter. I know be supporter. I know be supporter. Eh, just 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 leave her. Moku they look her because na the take her in be. No be the the give her na we go in a take her. Apart from apart from what you have said to me to me, if I have to speak objectively, I I sincerely appreciate what Mubara is doing in Portacot. It take goals. It take goals. For somebody to stand and be doing what he's doing, I appreciate bro, you for what you said. That's bro, not the bro, truth. Bro, bro, can I say something? Don't take any gods. They are please a game plan. Forgot all this now. Game plan. I can't do nothing. Thank you. Uh, anyway, my son for Fubara matter be say make you help me beat with cake where where. That's all. It's me your beat up. That's it. You said it all. Uh, if you can that is the happiness of every one of us who are from River State, because exactly. this man. This man, nah, river state 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 you don't know. Huh. Uh, this, do this guy uh, makes now nah, because they be fat too. Now nah, because they fight, if they don't fight now, we are not benefit any to you. We will not tell them they continue the fight. We want to make the continue like this, make project they go on. Today, now nah, go exactly. my road for 20. Do you know for this is 24 years? 24 years old delay awarded this road to my community and Donny. As an Ijoma, you know, say we day inside water. Since so the Lee regime, that is 20, 20, 2020, I think 2004 to 2005, now they start this project. This is when they are commissioning a rule. Now, no, 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 Today, today, as I'm talking to you, commission the road now, so I can I'm drive now I'm from Portugal to 
Flag for there now. Mexico flag now. Mexico president be that one. Nah, so Nigeria, Nigeria now turn by turn. <laughs> <laughs> I said they talk more. All right. Uh, for me, um, whatever that is going currently going on in Nigeria is pathetic. We can't continue like this. If you look at what is happening in reverse state right now, even though a lot of us are celebrating or happy, Afubara is making life difficult for Wiki. Uh, only God knows if Wiki will survive this because, um, you know, it's hitting him bad. Not just from him, you know, you know, when you have committed so many atrocities in the past, you know, a time will come, it will hit you so hard. But now, what do you take him out? Talk now, they are pet him. Exactly. So, even though we all know that Fubara was part of the satanic group before, both of them are fighting themselves right now for selfish reasons. But as long as the river state citizens or indigenous are benefiting from this their fight, let the fight begin or rather continue. Um, I appreciate you all my people. Obaseki did the same thing. These guys are satanic, in case you're not aware. My governor, Governor Obaseki, did it with Oshomole. And at the end of the day, he turned his back on us and he built a, a labor house and named it after satanic Oshomole. This is what you get from these people. You know, so don't be surprised Tomorrow, when Fubara will build one bridge, you know, after two years, we don't, we don't, we don't cause, cause, uh, or carry the matter before it. Then we can't name after Wiki. This is what we get. This is why I said the same people since 1960, they have been recycling themselves, impoverishing the citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's time for us to wake up. Thank you very much, my people. We've come to the end of this broadcast, five hours. On Saturday, normally I don't like to do five hours on Saturday. But tomorrow is another day. We have the governorship candidate of the YPP of Edo State coming to the broadcast tomorrow to take questions from Edo Lights, from Nigerians, why he wants to become the next governor of Edo State. As you all know, that Dr. Aswan Igodaro have been here. Dr. Uh, Barrister Olumide Akbata was here. Um, the only person who escaped as we speak, we are still pursuing him. We can't find him. We can't get hold of him. Is uh, Akma Um, What is the other name? Monday Okbeolo is on the run. We can't find him. We don't know where he is. So everybody's finding him. Not just my media. Every other media I'm looking for Okbeolo everywhere. Okbeolo, where are you? Come and speak to us. He's nowhere to be found. So, but the YPP governorship candidate will be with us tomorrow by 7 p.m. Nigerian time. In case you have a question or questions or you want to be part of the panel, you must come in on time. If not, um, you might end up being on the backstage. Although we do swapping sometimes, but it might still not get to your town. Join us on time, 7 p.m. tomorrow. We are going to start the broadcast from 6 p.m. Those of you that will join early, we have opportunity to have your seat, come with your popcorn, your coffee, your uh, anything you know you drink, you know, put it on. Come and drink it here and let's talk together. My people, now here now, enjoy the curtain. It's been a long day. I'd like to appreciate everyone of you that came to the panel today. Start with Mother Patricia Tagujumi. Thank you very much, man, for being a backbone. I appreciate you always. Thank you very much, Oga Ferreira. It's good to have you on the show today. I'm looking forward to having you again anytime soon thank you sir god bless you thank you my brother 
Black Panther, thank you for always being there. Thank you, Augustium. It's good to have our lecturer today. Augustium is the lecturer of this program, of this Nigeria Watch Media. When he's talking, everybody stay attentive. You know, thank you very much, Mr. Jonathan, our analysis. Our, and I, 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 I want to talk about our, um, again, the way we were supposed to give, um, this is Mr. Jonathan Seth. Mr. Jonathan, you'll get, you know, say on this panel. Our economist, our economist, Oga. Uh, our economist, you know, so everybody get the way they did for this platform. So I appreciate you all, my people. Thank you very much. Uh, Oga Chris, Oga Chris, thank you so much. One thing about Oga Chris, we say two things I noticed about this man. One, we say, if you make a verse, you go finish, you know, not agree, not the agreement that you don't make a verse at all. If you now want me or God Chris talk for this panel, I'm gonna make a verse. I don't know. See, this man get words for mouth. <laughs> you know, say get words for mouth. But still, when you not make a verse, you know they oppress him, and that oppression I mean not like. Or God Chris go be backstage. They say, "Can I speak? Can I speak? I'm here, Mister Nanja. Was I'm here? Can I speak?" Then you come hear someone like Black Panther who use a big voice, who use and suppress him. You can't hear Mr. Jonathan use a big voice and suppress him. Then ah, it's not nice. I'm not another check of that Chris like this. You know, Honorable Sam, thank you very much, sir, for joining us again today. You shake the table. In fact, we're supposed to clap for you, Honorable Sam, because that, that is your submission today. Eh? In fact, you spoil everywhere. Make a clap for you. <laughs> yeah. Now today, oh, nine yeah. talk now. Yes, you know if I they talk, but this one now the strong one, a very strong one. It's scattered everywhere. You see, the platform is about truth. We say the truth how it is, as I supposed to be. So I appreciate you all, my people. Mr. Odua, thank you very much. Sir. Don't worry. Tomorrow, if in case you're not available, we'll try our best to pass your your message of Okwila Road or Okwila Okwila Cement. Anyone, anyone who pass it to the uh, YPP governorship candidate that is coming to the platform tomorrow. You know, then our new guests or our new family will join us today, Prince or Jagon Alabo. Thank you very much. Your submission for your first time in the panel. Your submission was wicked. Thank you. Thank God, God bless you, my brother. I appreciate you. We are looking forward to having you more often on the panel so that we can learn. Uh, you can give us more um, uh, view of what is happening in the river states. You know, we need that as well. You know, thank you very much. So you have lots of sisters here that is from river state already speaking on your behalf. People like Love of God is my strength and many others. They are here. So you'll get to know them uh, anytime soon. So um, that is it. That is it. I think we should end the show right now. Thank you very much, my people. Okay. This one will okay. uh, see him come, come back again. So, I okay. see him. We know so we don't close now. Let me appreciate those of you that supported the channel today. I'll start with Adela Jagombi. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Peter Ife, Amaka B. Thank you, Peggy Modi, Spiritual Happiness, Charles Wilson, Patty Solomon. I appreciate you all, my people. Peggy Modi, once more, for becoming joining, joining the membership program again. Kingsley Ogerahi. God bless you, my people. You can never, ever, ever run dry. Then, the people that call into the show today, I'd like to appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Everyone who should have called into the show today, I might not remember all the names. You know, Agashi Mizi, thanks for calling in. And many others are calling Mr. Innocent. Many others. And God will bless you now. All right. I'd like to appreciate those of you right there on the comment section. Start with Mother of All, Mommy Diaspora. Thank you very much, Mommy, for all you do. God bless you for us. Um, appreciate you, Oga Abu Azi. Thank you very much. I appreciate all you do. Thank you, Oga Chris. You don't run go comment section in key. Thank you, sir. Anthony Ola. Thank you very much, Peggy Modi. Thank you, Tony Africa, Rosie Ayosh. God bless you all. Thank you, Jedima. Jedima in the building. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Destiny of Variable. God bless you. It's good to hear from you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Patience today with you. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you. Thank you, my wonderful people. George Efosa, Inedio. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, my wonderful people right there. 
All right, Michael Ganamaro in the building. It's good to hear from you, sir. Thank you very much, Pat Sonny. Thank you very much. God bless you all. We've come to the end of the broadcast. Please, guys, let's do it all over again tomorrow, 6 p.m. Nigerian time, 7 p.m. We're going to be having our guests, but we're going to start the broadcast by 6 p.m. so that we can take it from there. Have a good night and bye for now. No more bad government in Nigeria. In other words, good night. The only media have been, that have been consistent speaking against the bad government and for the purpose for reform. Good night, everybody. In other words, yo. Au revoir.